I low-key think this was for views. Why else would someone play devil's advocate? Especially when Ponda normally takes months making videos. Just seems sketchy when she rushed this one in particular. Happy New Year, my cutie pies! I bring with me good tidings and accusations of child grooming. Raise your hand if you expected me to take a zillion years to finish this video. What is that like, everyone? Yeah, yeah, that sounds about right. Alas, I should probably get this out of the way. I hear my artist is eager to move on to something else. So what's happened? Why are you here? I mean, this is the third video on the subject, so I wonder why you're hopping in here without knowing what's going on. Lucky for you, I'm willing to summarize. In April of 2018, two videos were released with the intent of exposing a YouTuber previously named Spockter Theory, now named Spockter Tech, for salacious actions including but not limited to, using his subscribers against others, creating a porn contest for his underage fans, pressuring people into creating not safe for work artwork for him, not paying his artists, moaning for money in live streams, that he was transphobic, and the most serious of the claims being that he was engaging in sexually explicit conversations with underage fans and sent not safe for work images to them. Unfortunately for Spockter, one of the people who claimed to be one of his victims had also previously in the year, and I think the year before, claimed that she was eight years old. Because of a good chunk of her audience believing this, it became spread around that Spockter had been sending nudes to an eight-year-old. And don't worry, we'll get more into that in a bit. So a lot of people, in YouTube videos and on Twitter in particular, were calling him a pedophile. About a week after the initial videos were released, I did a commentary on five videos related to the subject. The initial two exposed videos made by Atari and Pentagrin, a video on the matter by a larger YouTuber known as Question Turkey, a video made by Stories, the alleged victim of the situation, and a video by Spockter's ex, Ghosty. It's spelled Q-Hosty, but apparently it's pronounced Ghosty, so that's what I'll continue to refer to them as. Ultimately, a lot of the evidence didn't stack up to the claims provided, and when you looked deeper at the gaps in the evidence, all of a sudden things weren't making as much sense. As it turns out, the situation wasn't nearly as cut and dry as most people had been led to believe. Spockter wasn't using his subscribers against others. He just had a big ego and probably liked how quickly his channel was growing. The porn contest wasn't actually a porn contest. The rules page for the contest itself specified that it was a lewd contest, yes, but that contestants couldn't draw any overly provocative nudity and porn wasn't allowed at all. The pressuring people thing may have been exaggerated and may just be the result of a bunch of socially awkward kids not knowing how to clue in on social cues or situations. This one we'll be talking about in a bit. Spockter did, in fact, pay his artists. I found out this by actually going to the artists who drew him his character sprites and asking them as much. The moaning for money thing was actually in reference to him literally moaning for money. While most people interpreted this as him begging for money from how it was presented in the exposed videos, it was an in-stream gag where if you donated to him, he would moan seductively. The argument for him being transphobic wasn't at all presented well and may have simply been a misunderstanding. It may have been kids being stupid kids, or it may have been a joke that didn't go over too well. Unfortunately, a lot of the visual accounts for that don't exist, and it was only really hinging on participant testimony without any substantial screenshots. One of the artists Spockter paid for his sprites apparently is trans, and another one is dating a trans man, and both only had good things to say regarding his behavior, so this became more of a case of conflicting testimonies. For the final major claims that Spockter was grooming children through sexually explicit images and conversations, well, as it turns out, the screenshots used to claim this came from only two people. One of them was Ghosty, whom Spockter had been dating at the time, Ghosty being 14 and Spockter being 16. We know this because one of the screenshots Ghosty provided was from May 2017, and Spockter's birthday is on April 10th, so this would have been right after he turned 16. A lot of people tried to say that there was too much of an age gap, but there's really no issue with a 15-year-old and a 14-year-old dating, and that 15-year-old then turning 16 while they're dating. The other screenshots came from stories, the supposed eight-year-old. Spoilers, Stories is not eight years old. The conversations Ghosty provided were from the position of the two of them dating, and while different states and countries have different laws regarding whether it's okay for teenagers to text sexual messages to one another, I'll get into that a little later. The conversations that Stories provided were... Uh... Yeah, that's... That's a can of worms. And that's not even all of it. Before my first video came out, I ended up getting into a call with Atari and Pentagram where I listed a bunch of my issues with the videos as they were presented. Pentagram removed the video and deleted her YouTube account. After my video was released, Atari removed her video, apologized, and ended up making up with Spockter. Stories first took to Twitter and Discord trying to defend her video and the original accusations, and then deleted her own videos and her YouTube account. Months later, she got into contact with Spockter and myself on Discord. And apparently, she informed 
foster our friends, which was news to me, and it's something I've been having to deal with the backlash of the past couple weeks. It's been a wild ride. So this video is going to be delving into a couple videos on the matter, and primarily the screenshots that most people haven't seen yet. Before we get started, however, there are two things I want to address. Firstly, I'm going to be taking the initiative to put timestamps for this video down in the description. Some people have done that in the comment section of the last two videos, and it's super nice, so I'm going to be proactive and do that in this one for you guys. You can open the description and see all of the topics we're going to be covering, and there will be timestamps if you want to skip to that particular part of the video. The second thing I want to talk about are the other videos that were made about Spockter, as in the ones after the initial exposed videos. I covered a lot of them in the second video of the series and I had planned on covering even more of them here, but I decided I would ultimately be repeating myself. Maybe I'll make that a patron only video or something. There is one thing regarding them, however, and this was kind of brought to my attention by comments from a user named ba Bana Bana Jesus, what is this name? Bana Blah Bread Missy. I'm pretty sure their video on the Spockter situation is gone now, but while it was still up, I remembered a comment that Bread left. At the time, Bana Bread said that they weren't going to delete the video and pretend like they hadn't made a mistake by believing the initial hype, and that was their reasoning for keeping the video up. While I understand where you're coming from in this situation, I do want to make note that when you make a video that you consider to be a mistake, the severity of that mistake is usually what should determine whether the video stays up or not. I discussed in the last video how it was bad for users to just remove the Spockter videos and pretend like the situation never happened, but the reason that's a bad thing to do is because it doesn't seek to correct the mistake. It seeks to only hide it. There's nothing wrong with making a mistake. People do it all the time. I made a mistake in my first video, and when we come to that point in this one, I'll be apologizing for it. With serious allegations that turn out to be maybe not as cut and dry as you originally thought, or with situations that are just flat out wrong, you have to remember that while you may recognize the mistakes and remove the video for that reason, there's no actual guarantee that everybody who saw your video will have that same knowledge. When you remove a video without issuing a retraction or making a video explaining why you removed it, you're not cluing your audience in on the notion that the information you provided before may have been wrong. Without doing that, they might continue on believing what you had originally claimed. This is why I said that removing the videos and pretending like nothing happened was an issue, because a bunch of videos were making false claims about things they weren't entirely versed in, they threw it all out into the ether, and when they came back to the conclusion that they might have been wrong, they didn't bother to even try to reel that misinformation back in. Of course I recognize that you can't go to every single person that saw your video and let them know the mistake. There's no way to do that. But chances are, most of the people who saw your original videos on the matter were your subscribers, or people who frequent your content. You would at least let them know, and that's better than not making an effort at all. While I'm glad that it looks like Benabla Bread Missy has removed their video on the matter, if anybody else has a video that's still up and they don't think the information they provided in that video is up to snuff, then I would encourage taking it down and issuing a retraction. Also, I know, I know with YouTube's algorithm, maybe you don't want to lose the views, but you can private a video and keep the views as far as I'm aware. Remember, just put yourself in the mindset of someone who has false allegations spread about them. If a whole bunch of people make videos claiming something about you that wasn't true, you'd probably want them to take it down, wouldn't you? Okay, that's about all I have to say on that matter. On to the videos! So after my first video was released, people started coming to me with evidence against Pentagrin stories and Atari. When you really think about it, lots of different people had pieces to the puzzle. They simply couldn't see wide enough of a picture to realize what was going on. When my video came out, they recognized the importance of the evidence they didn't even know they had. One of those such people was Mimi Diggs, who contacted me on DeviantArt explaining what had actually happened before the Spockter Exposed videos were even made. I got a lot of explaining to do, and a lot of apologies to write, but I'm just gonna cut straight to the point of why I'm currently noting you about this if you check your notes sometimes. To start off, I was a fucking idiot that this was slide, and I was partly involved in conversations where I didn't belong in, and this includes the Spockter situation and a few others. After sitting down and viewing the entirety of your recent video, most of the actions that the following people, including myself, had made became clear to me. I was dishonest upon myself, and have participated in interacting with these people to the point of concern when I look back upon my own direct messaging and seeing how awful and disgusting I became. In short, I had done goofed and talked with Atari, Pentagon, and Stories. I'm not putting the blame on them entirely, since this is also my fault as well, and I will take the blame for it regardless. I really, really hate snitching, especially when most of the information I'm about to share proves your explanations even further. But nonetheless, I think you want to have a look. 
I don't want to make yet another video about this, mainly because the drama has escalated so much that I gave up on explaining the truth and spewing out white lies to prevent anyone from getting hurt. But someone did end up getting hurt by this conflict, and I do not want any more potential victims to be a part of it. I regret everything, and I do feel ashamed for this, and for anyone who feels the same way too. So I'm going to summarize what Mimi goes on to talk about through the rest of the note. Basically, she talks about an issue of harassment of a trans individual that happened in Spockter's server. The person in question, Ash Entropy, harassed them on the server until Ash was kicked off and then proceeded to harass the trans individual on their DeviantArt page. In the server rules, there existed a loophole that if something happened outside the server, then it was out of Spockter's control, which, you know, kind of makes sense, but I can also understand why people were upset about this. This is the situation that incited Mimi to be a part of the videos on Spockter, but it didn't end up being being something heavily focused on, which kind of surprises me actually. For as flawed as a lot of the arguments were, and as petty as they looked with hindsight in mind, I feel like this particular situation would have seemed like the proverbial nail in the coffin, especially regarding the claims that Spockter was supposed to be transphobic. We'll talk about that a little more in a couple minutes. The other thing she addressed was something called the Anti-Digbert Collective, and this situation is significant for one particular reason. Apparently, before the group decided that they were going to do a rant on and take down Spockter, they'd been planning to do the same thing to Digby the goat. Here's an image of Mimi and Atari talking about the Digby rant from September 4th, 2017. And here's an image of Pentagon saying that she wanted to take down Spockter in January of 2018. The funny thing is, apparently they were also asking Spockter if he wanted to be in on the anti-Digbert collective. Like, what? You want to take him down in January, Pentagon in particular, but when you're trying to take down Digby the year before and still later in March, which was when Mimi was added to the anti-Digbert collective, so that's how I know it was going on then, you want to pull him in and get him to do your dirty work? Atari sent me screenshots of her conversations with Pentagon in November of 2017, where they were talking about getting Spockter in on the Digby rant. Also, side note, some of the stuff that Pentagon says in that chat is hilarious when looking at it through the 2020 lenses of hindsight. Oof. 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 Atari clued in on the notion that the rant wasn't really going anywhere and she'd changed her views on the matter, so she was the one who ended up closing the group. So thank you, Atari. I imagine that the rant didn't happen because you did that. To Mimi Diggs, I have to thank you for all these screenshots you've sent me. They were quite enlightening. And yet... Alright, time to get to work. <laughs> get out of my way, you discount edgelord. I don't need some mediocre voice actor playing me again. I'm just gonna say this right before we start off. Unfortunately, since he wiped out most of my DMs with him due to damage control, it's gonna be difficult to grab some solid evidence. Wait, what solid evidence? This claim doesn't really make a lot of sense based on what the accusations against Spockter were. The evidence originally provided were mostly screenshots of sexual conversations. Were you one of the people in sexual conversations with Spockter? Because that would actually be really bad for you, Mimi, if you're as old as you sound. The answer is no, but bear with me here. I'm actually curious as to what was in that chat that she thought counted as evidence on this matter. But for now, let's discuss on why we are here today. Sparkle doesn't give a single fuck about anyone, we all know that by now. However, he makes people get away with things that they shouldn't in his old server. As a moderator on his server, I, as well as many other former mods and admins, had experienced some pretty awful shit. I know someone who won't be named talked to him about this behavior already, sadly. Spock didn't listen. For me personally, the thing that bothers me the most now that I have time to let it set through is that the only way to get close to Spock is to draw a point in some kind of way. I legit feel nasty and I um, followed him on all social media because of this guilt. Even to the point of begging me for more porn. I tried to tell myself that it's just Spock, but... I feel so gross after drawing it. I never 100% regret drawing a picture, but that's what I did. And it's not a very good feeling since I wasn't in the good mental state then either. And regarding the transphobia, again, I've not once been misgendered but it shouldn't be ignored when he deliberately ignored another person's pronoun. He excuses, let's call them B for safety despite them never caring for mine, actions to deliberately attacking and harassing not only me, but so many others from all the thing while everyone else were trying to figure out a plan. Spock just 
sat back and mocked us for the situation. Blah, blah, be this, and blah, blah, be that kind of attitude. It clearly didn't help, and especially after that, I didn't want to talk to him anymore. If he's gonna not defend what he calls friends, and not call out his best friend, friend, I want nothing to do with it. If he's going to excuse transphobia, then proceed to use it himself. I want no part. If I get found out and attacked for this, so fucking be it. It just proves how egotistical and swallow-headed and willingness to not improve is. One, he's a toxic childish member with bad jokes and makes furries out to be more point as trash. Two, he abused a young girl to do porn and ask or do commission someone else to do porn for him, whatever he wants to do. Okay, so while Mimi blocked out their name, I'm perfectly aware of who this user is. I'm also aware of the situation regarding the person known as B that they're referring to. I just talked about it. The blotted out user here is Pegagamer, a trans mod from Spectre's original server. The B person is Ash Entropy. What started out as a disagreement in the server itself ended up leaving said server because while it wasn't allowed in there, the loophole in the server rules meant that people couldn't be penalized for stuff they did outside the server. The earliest dated screenshots I have for this happening are from October 23rd, 2017. It has effectively continued for months. On October 21st, Spectre was either told about the situation initially or talked about it in direct messages. He seems to be reacting to the situation under the pretense that Ash Entropy is acting like a troll and ignoring him or else not eliciting the desired response would make him stop. On this note, I can understand where Spectre is coming from. He probably doesn't want to get involved between two friends who are having a disagreement, and even in this screenshot itself, he makes note that he doesn't want to take sides. For a 16 year old, because yes, he was 16 at the time, I can't really fault him for acting like this. He just doesn't want people to hate him for his activity or inactivity. I even went to talk to Pega directly to ask what he thought of the situation. This was his response. I admit the first shot was me. I was a fucking idiot and was being dragged in and she wanted my opinion. I admit it wasn't and still isn't my brightest moment after I flat out said I wanted nothing. Plus, I wasn't in the best mental state, so it closed my judgment. It doesn't excuse my behavior though, and I learned not to involve myself in shit I don't know a lot about. So, I don't stick my nose in shit now. As for Ash, I still don't like him and think he's an idiot and a bigot. Like, I'm cool with debating and discussing subjects with people who disagree with me, but he kind of went far to personal attack and to the point of harassment on DeviantArt and Twitter, even getting others involved. Personally, I have no empathy for him and won't care if he got hit by a car. As my opinion in full, it could have been avoided if people at least talked to one another for once, <sighs> including myself. You're welcome, Ponder. I am sick while recording this, and I'm sorry for my Love you. Wow, a situation that was blown out of proportions and could have easily been sorted out if people chose to talk to one another instead of venting separately and attacking one another in retaliation? Color me shocked. Never seen a situation like that recently. I'm glad that people have at least learned a lesson from it. That's one thing to be glad for. And as we formed a group to discuss situations within the server just to enforce his rules, he disappeared from the administration table for a very long time. He only checks in from time to time to see the condition of his server and to interact with his fans minorly. Nobody knows what the hell he was doing while he was off to god knows where, but it was clear that it was very suspicious. You know, I'm kind of glad that this video got pushed until after the Foster Katzen thing, because now you guys probably know why this claim in particular makes no sense. Him not being active on Discord is suspicious? Why? The notion that someone might have things outside of the internet to do is just too foreign a concept? I mean, yeah, I know we are talking about weebians, and they practically live online, but come on! A 16 year old is busy with life that's not online? Perish the thought! As for other news, I saved screenshots on an incident that happened during my first few days as a moderator on his server. The user I encountered during this time was popular among the server due to her cute voice. She was also favored by Spockter. When we started roleplaying in DMs, however, she attempted to send me nudes. FBI, open up! getting worse and worse. Of course I said no and backed off like a good girl and reported this to the administration. Spockter was especially displeased about this for some odd reason, but he let me off of a warning to never interact with his user again on duty. 
I kept my word, and he watched over me ever since just to make sure I wasn't interacting with any other girls. See, this is why I don't like accounts like this. It's all based not only on personal interpretation and potentially, since Mimi was contacted by Pentagon and incited into doing a rant on Spockter, bias, without providing any evidence to support the claims. This would be the equivalent to if I said that I'd heard Pentagon was planning on taking her revenge by coming back and secretly weaseling her way into my friend group under a different name so that she could take me down from the inside, and then I didn't provide any evidence to support my claims. Good thing I haven't heard any rumors of that. Where was I again? Every time I talked to him, he was sound as if he was attacked. As if he was hiding something. That's personal interpretation. People could literally say the same thing about me and you. This means nothing. He only talks to me when his reputation or his friends were threatened by drama outside the server. Ah, the irony. And I wasn't the only one who witnessed this. Or experienced this. But that's basically my input on Spockter Theory. I didn't even know he was such a fucking awful dude. Like... This makes me so pissed off. It also goes to show that from my experience alone, there are underage minors that are capable of sending nudes to Spockter. So I wonder if that user and him did something nasty? And that's straight up speculation that isn't based on any evidence. For one thing, if the minor in question was trying to send nudes to people, then that wouldn't have been Spockter's fault. Mimi seems to have this weird guilt by association thing going that she applies to Spockter here without really taking into consideration who would be at fault. And we can see that's the case because she also tweeted about the situation, and... Before I delete my contest entry from Spockter Theory's contest, I want to let everyone know that my artwork of a pedophile has attracted other pedophiles. Nuff said. Hashtag, stay away from from Spockter Theory. From Wonder Girl Power 90. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Wait a minute, wait a minute! Is that my sweet husband, Spockty? Please let it be him! Please let it be him! I want to hug and let him lick my chest for me! Awesome artwork! From Wonder Girl Power 90's profile. Wonder Girl Power 90, Kimberly, United States. My name is Kimberly. I'm 28 years of age. <sighs> Mimi? Honey? That's not how that works. For one thing, the character of Spockter, you know, the big, deep-voiced, green tree lizard assassin man, that character is of age. A person being attracted to a furry character who is of age does not make them a pedophile. Furthermore, how did you get it in your mind that mature artwork of an adult character would attract pedophiles? That's like... The exact opposite of how that works. I also just want to point out what was said in that conversation Mimi had with the minor. So yeah, if you want a boob pic or something, I don't care. I can trust you, LMAO. Oh. Fuck. No nudes. LMAO, okay. No nudes for real, you could be in jail! I could be in jail! Women! No! But if you are, I'd be curious. Winky face. No! You wanna see me in a bra or not, LMAO? It's better than showing Kassin of a whammon. Wah! No, that would be a felony offense. <laughs> Waluigi. I'm better than that. So you're saying me boobs are bad? Crying face. <laughs> you really want to do that in front of me? What? Show me in a bra? Yeah, because I know you wouldn't show anyone. I could. By reporting your butt. No. For sending me nudes. I'm like 14. I can't go to jail. It's a bra. You're also freaking fucking a moderator here, boy. I'm a responsible woman. Winky face. But if we don't tell, we can be very sneak. No. No toxic shit. Eyes on it. Okay, but whenever you are curious about your wife who in a bra, hit me up, B. This sounds like a joke. Maybe it's just me, and I could be totally wrong, but neither party sounds sincere in this conversation. I don't know, whenever I see someone shove Waluigi into a conversation, I don't tend to think they're being serious anymore. I don't know, but it sure was uncomfortable. <laughs> He demoted everyone in search of new administrators, probably because, as we saw from the last video, some of the mods admit to being culpable in not doing their jobs. Plus, if Spockter wasn't occupying the server frequently, as you've already stated he wasn't, he would have had to make sure that the mods he did have kept it up with actually moderating the server. If they're not doing their job and he doesn't have the time to keep them on track, then yeah, it makes sense to switch them out for a more reliable group. The nude girl might still be in contact with Spectre Theory. She got away with it. Might still be in contact. As in you don't know. And she got away with what? Not sending you nudes? 
because as far as we're aware, she didn't send any. She offered to send you some, potentially in jest, and you said no. Beyond that, we have no indication that anything of the like actually ended up happening. You can't even be positive that the girl wasn't talked to about the matter by Spockter himself. You said that he was upset by the situation, but don't tell us whether you know for sure if he acted on the information you gave him. You just sort of imply that he didn't. Bat me, daddy. Bat, bat. <laughs> I'm gonna kill myself. No real point, I just wanted to make some of my friends voice act that part. Haha. <laughs> Mimi also made a journal about the situation after my first video came out, and unfortunately, while she's a tad more informed about what Spockter was actually guilty of, she still kind of misses the point on a couple things. Including claiming that distributing child pornography is equally as serious as pedophilia. I mean, I know where she's coming from, but you kind of have to take into consideration the parties involved in this situation, and, like, pedophilia isn't a crime. It's acting on it that makes it a crime. That- that's- that's how that works. I'll talk about the legalities more towards the end, but let's just say, while Mimi acknowledges one of the parties and how they did wrong, she completely ignores the other party involved. Specifically, she ignores that, well, they committed the exact same offense. Okay, enough with this. On to the next video. Oh look! It's the return! <laughs> Before we start with this section, I do need to explain something that happened behind the scenes. Ghosty ended up contacting me on DeviantArt. While they did want to specify that they took responsibility for their videos and actions, they had a couple requests for this last installment. Firstly, they requested that I not showcase the visual part of the video because the character they used as representation at the time now belongs to another artist, and they don't want that artist to be affected by the situation, which I completely understand. Secondly, they requested that I change the audio portion of the video to a text-to-speech alternative. The reasoning behind this is more personal, and so I'm not going to get into it. All that really matters is that I'm going to respect Ghosty's wishes here, so similar to what I did in my recent co-op commentary with Manga Common, I've written out a transcript of what Ghosty said in these next two videos, and I'll be having a friend read it off in the same vein as what was originally presented. So please note that what's about to be read aloud is from Ghosty's second and third videos about the drama at the time that it was still growing. Hey, I know I made a video which is pretty vague yesterday, but I'm gonna make a full one now that his apology is out. I know most of you have heard about this stuff in Atari and Pentagon's videos, but I'm gonna go slightly more in depth with it and fully explain my side in the case if you haven't seen it. I'm not trying to drag this on- Oh don't worry, I'm sure at this point people are gonna say that about me, so you're probably in the clear. But I honestly need to get this off my chest and explain why his apology is bullshit. As I do think I have the best reasoning as to why shouldn't be forgiven, and it would just simply be ignored if I were to put in a tweet or a journal. People might not know who I am. I am Spockter's ex. We did for... I'm... I don't know. Until the uh, 10th of May? I think it was the 10th. If it wasn't, I was only a few days off. I don't know the exact date we started dating because, to be honest, I didn't even realize we started dating. I told him I liked him on the 26th of April, and a few days later, he just randomly blurted out, Oh yeah, I told mm. that we're dating! So, I just kinda rolled with it. During this relationship, he did some very disgusting things, such as being constantly sexual towards me, being 13, turning 14. This screenshot that you yourself provided is from May 8th. You claim to have started dating, to your own knowledge, by the 26th of April. Spockter turned 16 on the 10th of April. In this screenshot, he mentions you being 14. I'm detecting some inconsistencies. I mean, even if you want to say that you were 13 turning 14, at the time, he was 15 turning 16. 16. Like, it's not like it's a shocking age difference. That's an 11th grader dating a 9th grader. People did that all the time when I was in school. Also, wait a second. You guys dated for less than half a month. From a few days after the 26th of April to the 10th of May. That's barely a third of a month. Honestly, from the way you've been describing it, I kind of thought it would have been longer than that. He would constantly brag about his subscriber count, ask me if I could make him smut, and then later ask me to make him some explicit smut. Here's an image of Spockter on the 25th of April, by your own account before you ever told him that you liked him, asking if you'd ever drawn smut before, and you reply that yes, you did. Here's an image from the 2nd of May, asking about your boundaries. Here's an extension of the conversation where he asks how explicit you can get, giving you an out if you're not comfortable with drawing that stuff. You saying that you could get as explicit as he wants. Here's you 
acknowledging him telling you not to go overboard. Guys, it's okay to regret things that you agreed to at the time, but if you don't make your feelings on the matter known, then you can't vilify the other person in the situation. If you don't make it known to them your issues at the time, then you can't be angry with them for continuing under the assumption that you're okay with it. The regret on the situation should only be on you, and you should use it to grow as a person after the fact with a better understanding of what your own boundaries are. Now granted, if a person deliberately does something in spite of your own boundaries, then yeah, you'd have a case, but that's not what happened here. I also just realized this screenshot you showed of Spockter commenting on your DeviantArt was from April 23rd, 2017, before you guys started dating and before he came to ask you about smut. Wow, color me shocked that someone who responded with a link to what I can only assume is not safe for work material, he would then ask regarding their capability or willingness to drive. I also just realized at the moment of recording this, I'm pretty sure Ghosty used this screenshot as evidence of them dating, but this screenshot is from before they were dating. What? Told my 13-year-old friend to touch themselves while venting and pressured another 13-year-old friend of mine to draw porn of us while she said that she was uncomfortable several times, and that was pretty transphobic. For the sexual stuff, I know sexual stuff is bound to happen in almost every relationship, but not to the extent that this did, and certainly does not- certainly not with someone who's underage. Um, yeah. Sexual stuff does happen with people who are underage, especially if both parties in the relationship are underage. Teenagers have sex all the time. Where did you even get this? Even just from the people I knew in high school, sex definitely happens. There were, uh, uh... Some of the rumors I heard towards my last year about where some of the ninth graders were having sex in the school kind of surprised me with how adventurous people could be. I don't know, maybe I was just vanilla. Just because it happens to a lot of people, though, how does not mean... doesn't mean it's justified. What? You just said that it didn't happen. Now you're saying it happens to a lot of people? Like, these claims weren't even a sentence apart. They were directly after one another. And doesn't make what justified? Saying sexual stuff to someone whom he's aware has a crush on him, whom he's currently dating, and whom, as far as we can tell from the screenshots you've shown us, hasn't been told that you dislike sex talk? That was also something I didn't notice in the first video, is that all of these screenshots are from over the course of only a few select days. Basically, a little before you guys started dating up until right before you stopped. In such a short amount of time, why is there no direct screenshot of you making note that you don't like sexual talk? Like, if you don't make it known that you're uncomfortable with certain topics of conversation, you can't be mad when the other party doesn't know. And you haven't showcased us that you actually told him this. You just showcased him reacting to something that might be that. People are not mind readers. I understand that it can be difficult to be forward about your feelings, but that isn't anybody else's fault. Actually, even your initial claim that it's difficult to get all the necessary screenshots doesn't make a lot of sense, because you've clearly showcased you could get screenshots from before the relationship leading up to the end of it. Why would you not just screenshot every everything from within that time frame. If you had to scroll up further on Skype, then I'd understand. But you've already made note when the two of you started dating. I don't see why you'd have to scroll up any further than that. And if you told him you weren't comfortable with it within that time frame, then we should be seeing the screenshot. The only reasonable excuse might be that the conversation was on Discord, but we don't have much indication for that considering your Skype screenshots extend all the way up past May 8th without any sort of indication of this conversation happening. And the screenshot you presented of Spockter reacting to what you said was you saying this was on Skype. There should be no reason why you can't provide that screenshot. For example, he'd tell me every time he was going to jack off, telling me to call him daddy, talking about, talking about, asking about our kinks, saying we should probably try something, meaning fuck me, of course. Try something does not inherently mean fuck you. Yeah, it could have meant that, but it also could have been just as innocuous as hand-holding. The fact that you guys were countries apart probably also spurred on some of the big talk just because there was so little a chance that you'd meet up in real life anytime soon. People tend to talk themselves up or talk big when there isn't the likelihood that they would have to physically act upon those claims. If we ever met in real life and tried to have an SFW roleplay with me, I did, admittedly, go along with some of the stuff at the time because I didn't want to upset my boyfriend, despite myself being uncomfortable. Such as calling him daddy and drawing him the smut he wanted and the blames completely on me for that, but you have to consider there wasn't a lot of pressure on a 13 to 14 year old to make their significant other happy and I'm a minor, not of legal age in my country, meaning I cannot give consent regardless of what I said. 
I mean, you just tried to vilify him for this, and now you're going back on it and acknowledging that, yes, you went along with it and didn't reveal your feelings. That's kind of a problem. Spockter's also a minor, by the way, and depending on the- Okay, so, your accent is Scottish, right? The only sort of laws that I can find with regards to teen sexting is referring to the distribution of images of people who are underage, which, as far as you've explained from your time dating Spockter, didn't happen. I can't find any sort of laws that say that teenagers cannot engage in sexual conversations with one another, and even even if that were the case, teens talk about sex all the time, in high school and outside of it. So how would that even be regulated? Again, I understand the pressure of a teenager wanting to keep their partner happy. I was subject to this. But young teens, you guys need to understand that you have the power to say no. Any person who berates you for doing as much probably isn't someone that you want to keep in your lives anyway. Nothing significantly bad even happened in this chat from what you've shown us. You simply became uncomfortable through certain conversations. That's fine. It's okay to be uncomfortable, but you have to voice that you're uncomfortable and you certainly can't use excuses like this to try and make that uncomfortable feeling into something more villainous than it was. I did tell him I'd get embarrassed and uncomfortable at the mention of sexual topics at one point and he told me that dating him would get me used to it, which yeah, that's not very dirt. You can't just say that to someone who's uncomfortable. Finally, something I can work with. Do need to point out, however, that in the same vein that you were unable to properly express your feelings and deal with the situation accordingly, you are in the same same breath, expecting Spockter to know how to handle this situation accordingly. Teenagers being teenagers. Plus, even before you guys started dating, you linked him to something marked as not safe for work. What is he supposed to think at that point? You've kind of been sending mixed signals. Also, something I just noticed, why is it not okay for Spockter, based on what you claim regarding consent and legalities, to talk about sex stuff with you, but it's perfectly okay for you to send him not safe for work links and draw smut and explicit artwork and potentially send that to other minors. And despite your actions of sending and drawing not safe for work material, you also actually like it's bad for him to one not know that you were uncomfortable with sexual conversations and two suggest the notion of dating him would help you pass those reservations as you have clearly already demonstrated an interest in it with your own artwork this doesn't make any sense the first time he mentioned his subscriber count, my friend and I thought he was joking until he brought it up again and again and again when I didn't answer. Then he asked the question again and wanted me to answer, of course. Do, do, do I need to explain why being a cocky shithead is bad? Do I need to explain why sending mixed signals and then vilifying someone for something you actively participate in of your own volition and without provocation is bad? One of the things he asked me was if, like, when we first met, when he'd- When we first met, he'd- Asked me if I ever drawn smut and heavily suggested that I should make him stuff. No, he didn't. We can literally see within the screenshots that he's asking if you've drawn it before. You say that you have, and he asks if he can see it. Even in the second one, he seems like he's trying to be mutual with someone whom, may I remind you, apparently shared not safe for work stuff with him two days before. Looking back now, I think it was pretty obvious he was trying to manipulate and use me for NSFW art, which honestly ties into the fact he thinks he's better than everyone because he has a large fan base, which is easily manipulated. Oh my god! I draw smut and porn in my free time. This guy, whom I've sent a not safe for work link to, also likes smut. We bond over this perception of our mutual interest in smut artwork. Therefore, he was manipulating me. Ghosty. Come on! Actually, you could totally flip the situation around and say that you were trying to draw him in with Smut, manipulating his interest in it, because the link you sent was before the earliest recounting you have of him directly asking about it. That's... That's kind of funny. I would also like to point out that this statement is likely in response to the claims that Spockter was a child groomer, but this doesn't actually make any sense if you know what grooming actually entails. When Ghosty was recounting how their relationship with Spockter began, they specified saying that they didn't know the two of them were in a relationship until Spockter told them that he had told someone else that the two of them were dating. A huge grooming tactic is to keep the nature of the relationship between the predator and their prey private. Groomers don't want people going around and advertising that they're in a relationship because they're not supposed to be in a relationship with someone that young. It lets them manipulate the victim without others knowing what's going on. Illymation actually did an amazing job at showcasing an example of a grooming relationship. I'll put a link to one of her videos on the subject in the description so you can watch it on your own time, but one of the things she makes note of is that the guy who manipulated her expressly said that he wanted her to keep their relationship a secret. And all he wanted was a friend. But, and this is important, he told me to never tell my parents about our friendship. Why? Because they wouldn't understand us. We're like Romeo and Juliet, okay? 
Based on what Ghosty said about Spocker's behavior, this doesn't make any sense. On top of that, beyond the abuse, child groomers tend to shower their victim with attention and try to make them feel special, which actually goes against one of the claims Ghosty made in the description of the stash where they kept their screenshots. Here, Ghosty says that Spocker, halfway through their relationship, what is that, like six or seven days, hinted that there was another girl he liked. Ghosty also claims that he would frequently compare them to his ex. This is the exact opposite of how to groom someone. Also, grooming is generally a long-term thing, and you guys only dated for 14 days. Maybe. At most. You were not being groomed. Chill. He asked if WBDSM roleplayed with me once and the result of their on screen right now and tried to do that with a minor is shitty. <coughs> <clears throat> Once when my friend, 13 year old friend was venting, I won't say what they were venting about of course, instead of giving actual advice, he told them to go touch themselves. Not only is that an inappropriate time to say that, it's also very fucked up to say that to a 13 year old. Then to another 13 year old friend, he kept pestering her to make an NSFW art, despite her saying that she was uncomfortable at least five times. Y'all do know that groomers are usually a little more tactical in their manipulation, right? I mean. Usually, there are some dumb ones now and again. But yeah, I don't exactly expect a teenage boy to understand how to deal appropriately with someone venting. Maybe it's just me. I can't provide proof of it because it happened in a private Discord server Spocter made and then deleted. However, I do have some screenshots of when he moved to Skype to discuss this. He's clearly trying to bribe and make deals for her to do it. Which obviously suggests she didn't initially want to. I even tried hinting she was uncomfortable when this, but I was too scared to start shit. So I didn't make it super serious. However, I wish I did and I assure you that my friend did make it serious from the start, but... <sighs> Guys, offering to pay an artist to finish a piece of artwork? We have a word for that. Surprisingly, it's not bribery. The usual terminology is commission. Shouldn't this be a good thing? Spocter was willing to pay the artist to see the finished piece rather than have it remain as a request. Usually that's a good thing. Artists generally need to recognize that they can be paid for their work. So the fact that this was handed to them as a potential commission, I don't know if this artist recognized this, but maybe they should attend some weekend classes. I know a pretty good one that I could probably hook you up in. Okay, let's test what you've all learned so far. Ready, class? All together now. Can you draw me for free? Fuck, Fuck you, pay, pay me. me. I have a comic idea that can benefit us both. Fuck, Fuck you, pay, pay me. Can you make an OC for me? Fuck, Fuck you, pay, pay me. me. I can give you great exposure to my 900 followers. Fuck, Fuck you, pay, pay me. me. I'm sorry to inform you that unless you provide me with the necessary funds to complete this transaction, I cannot comply with your request. Very good. Remember, you can still deny any commission that comes your way, but either way, getting paid for your work helps you fund your own projects down the line. Also, Caden, get out of my class. Fuck you, I can be a pretty artist too! <laughs> also, can we just bring those screenshots up again? Am I supposed to believe that the artist you're talking about, the artist who is supposedly uncomfortable, is Bimo? The artist who says, in response to Spockter asking if he should leave, I'm assuming under the impression that they were uncomfortable. You are a puss. Shut the fuck up. <sighs> Ghosty. Blissful ignorance because of people not expressing how they feel about drawing something is not a crime. Also, a triple slash and Emmy uncomfortably screaming in the background sounds like you're cracking jokes at the situation. You do not get to be mad at someone because you chose to be subtle about something and you were too subtle for them to catch on. Like at that point, just be blunt. I know it's hard when you start out, but it gets way easier once you've done it a couple times. Hey, you're into tentacle porn, right, B? Ponder Sprocket's probably into it, huh? No, not really. Oh, <laughs> I get it, you're just shy. You should totally draw more of it. It'll be fun! No, thank you. Oh, but if you just- ah! <laughs> Pressure! Pushing down on me! Pressing down on you! You're an asshole! Under pressure! That brings a building down! Splits a family in two! Puts people on streets! Ma baby! Ma baby! It did her! It did her! Okay! Another thing he did once was when I was venting to him about something super personal, not something minor. I mean, super personal. I left the server for reasons related to it, and when people asked, he flat out said what was going on with me. I won't say what it was, but 
he basically released the context of my personal situation to a mod chat full of strangers and people I don't know without my permission or knowledge and never told me and I had to find out myself when he gave me mod for, what, two hours? What? Oh! Oh, you think I have something to say on that? Um, nope! If he did that, it was a dick move. I feel like you can be mad at him if he did that. I don't know if you could vilify him to other people for that, but if it happened, then it was totally a dick move. I cannot provide proof, of course, since the server was deleted and I never got a screenshot of it. He was also transphobic. No, no, I'm not doing this. I am not going to argue whether someone is or is not transphobic based on personal interpretation of a situation that they even admit could have been based on jokes, but which could have had multiple other means of it being interpreted, especially when I don't have screenshots to go on. We're skipping it. And I actually haven't pulled this one out in a long time, so, uh... <clears throat> Oh my god, I don't care! This part is basically nothing compared to the other other stuff he did, but don't give a shit about releasing private screenshots, as he did the same. He uploaded a video which included my friend's art, which was shared privately in a Skype chat, and this was after we cut each other off. Why would you use your ex-best friend's art in the fan art section, which wasn't even fan art? It was just generally art based on an inside joke, and they were never friends to begin with. But why would you do that? That's... that's beyond me. Not even that, he didn't credit her nor anyone else's fan art in the same video, which is against YouTube's terms of service, mind you. Guys, I told my friends I was working on this point. Micromavi read it aloud, and now she's threatening to come to Canada and beat the shit out of me for making her read it, and I'm scared. Guys, <laughs> I, I, need, I, I actually do have something very important to tell you guys. Okay, what? Okay, so I took the biggest shit earlier today, right? <laughs> And okay, the, like, see, this here's the shit, thing. Here's this the shit thing. Was so fucking good. Look, look Mavi, Mavi, here's the thing. I'd be interested if it wasn't for the fact that I'm not. Well, you see, that's why you're wrong and you shouldn't speak because you're a woman. Now. <laughs> guys, guys, guys. What? 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 I just. What? I want. I want you to read that. Just tell. Tell me what you think. Okay. You want. You want me to read it? Okay, can I read it aloud? Yeah, you can read it aloud. Okay. I'm drawing. I don't have time to read. Well, yeah, that's why you're. You not never have time you. to read. You don't read. That's um, implying, that's implying Dulu can read. She's only in like what the second grade. <laughs> <laughs> I was probably like, taller than you when I was in second. You're okay, sure. so if no one has the balls to read it, I'll read it. Uh, fuck <laughs> off! I'm reading it. No. Uh, well, fine. Jeez. Called, I have. I have the quickest draw. Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> This part is basically nothing compared to the other if other stuff he did, okay? But I don't give a shit about releasing private screenshots as he did the same. He uploaded a video which included my friend's art, which was shared privately in a Skype chat, and this was after we cut each other off. Why would you use your ex, your ex's best friend's art in the fan art section, which wasn't even fan art? It was just generally based on, it was generally art based on an inside joke. And they were never friends to begin with. But why would you do that? That's, that's beyond me. Not even on that, he didn't credit her nor anyone else's fan art in the same video, which is against YouTube's terms of service, mind you. What? So, okay, hang on. Navi.exe just stopped fucking working. Okay, cool. I'm, I'm confused. What? I, I, uh, I, think, I think the implication is like... The, the the artist who drew the artwork for him isn't actually a fan of him. I think it they just drew it because he was Ghosty's boyfriend, not because they actually liked him, just because they were dating their friend. Okay, Ponder, I do have one thing I want to add into all this. Yes. I'm gonna fucking find you. And when I find you, I'm gonna find your fucking family. And when I find your fucking family, I'm gonna go execution style on their asses and make you watch the show. I'm gonna become Stalin up in this bitch. I'm gonna have a, nice, better, I'm gonna have a much better fucking mustache. Okay. Somebody speak communism. Yes. I'm gonna. Be <laughs> Nobody asked for your opinion, Mr. Marx. 
I'm gonna beat your ass with a metal foot of up your ass, okay? Not just like a metal boot, not like a metal boot. I'm gonna turn my foot into a metal foot because I know how you have a thing for fucking robots and shit. I'm gonna make, I'm gonna make my metalized robot ding dong of a leg up your ass and hope that it comes out your mouth. That that's kinky. <laughs> Is she saying fuck because she's disgusted or turned on? YOLO! <laughs> What's happened? Hey, 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 Ponder, hey, Ponder, look, if you're not gonna be loyal to me and you're just gonna freaking sleep with this robot, like, every single fucking week, you know, I, I don't know if I can do this anymore. She I is a lesbian! show you guys a comment, <laughs> now I feel so attacked. Listen, listen, Ponder. Listen, Ponder. I'm gonna tell you this now. You show this shit to me, I will fuck your wife and ruin your crops, okay? I and, have and, and you know what? You know what the worst part about this is? I'm stealing Demona. No! Okay, so discounting the notion that you apparently have to be friends to showcase fan art of your character in the fan art section, which would negate the point of fan art in the first place. You're mad at him for featuring your friend's art of his character with other artwork of his character that he thinks is good and wants to show to others. And yeah, if he forgot to link to the artist so other people could see them, then that would be an issue. Or it could be a mistake and he simply forgot to add the credits. Unfortunately, we can't check this because the video you're mad about doesn't exist anymore. I went to check and see if Spocter ended up crediting the artist in the description and it looks like the video was taken down. So not an issue anymore, I guess? I don't even know if this video was still up when Ghosty made their videos on the drama because all they showcase is the Discord call where they were making note of the video, which was forever ago. No, but that aside, let's not forget that you are complaining that someone drew artwork of Spockter's character and he liked it enough that he wanted to promote it. The horror. A 16 year old potentially makes a mistake and doesn't properly credit the fan art he's trying to promote? Pure dread. If you haven't figured it out yet, I think this complaint is stupid. Even if you want to make the complaint that Spockter shouldn't have been posting artwork of him made by friends of his ex, you guys broke up on May 10th, according to you and the screenshot from Discord where you're discussing the video is from June 25th, meaning that the video was likely uploaded sometime between when you broke up and this screenshot. But Spockter could have been working on it or selected the fan art to be used for it before you broke up. I don't know how long it takes him to get videos done, but I know that when I plan for a video, I usually plan what fan art to feature at the end of it way in advance. It also doesn't really help that the person reacting to the artwork is Emmy. You know, BMO. That person that Spockter offered to pay to see the finished artwork done, likely indicating that he liked the artwork. Actually, is this the same piece of artwork? God, this is stupid. Which is against YouTube's terms of service, mind you. So is bullying, which would be a tad problematic considering what this video was made in response to, but wow, I'm not getting into that. That's everything on my end. I'm going to make a list of everything that Spockter's done now that you know the context of this, and I want you to... I want you to tell me if all this stuff together is honestly forgivable when you put it like this. When you put it like this. Ha. Huh. I think we know why using that phrase here in light of certain revelations about this situation probably wasn't the best choice of words. This all this doesn't only include my parts. Others too. I tried to put all of them in chronological order. He asked a miner to make smut. The minor being you, who already made smut artwork in their pastime and possibly linked Spockter to not safe work material before he ever asked you about your willingness to draw it yourself. He was constantly sexual towards the minor. Whom he was, as a minor himself, also dating. Bragged about his sub count. The horrors of an ego. Told a 13 year old to go touch themselves while spending. You know, based on what I've seen recently in trying to delve into the situation of young teenagers expressing their sexuality, I'm not at all surprised by this. Tried to have an SFW roleplay with a minor. The minor he was dating and whom drew smut in their pastime. Pressure a 13 year old minor to make NSFW art despite them saying they were uncomfortable. They literally did not say that in any of the screenshots you showed us. You flat out admitted that neither you nor the artist in question were able to state within the conversation as it happened that you were uncomfortable and instead chose to be subtle about it. The subtlety clearly going over his head. You do not get to revise history now. Somewhat leaked a personal vent in a mod chat. Chat. If it's true, then yeah, that sucks. Oh, but I'm sorry. And going back over my notes, I remembered this little screenshot where you actually specify what the potential issue he revealed to people was. And look, Ghosty, I completely feel for you if you're stuck in a situation like that. But other teenagers online 
are not going to really grasp the severity of what you're going through. It's completely inexcusable if you're going through that, but people around your age aren't always going to be versed enough or tactful enough to know what to do when you reveal something like that to them. It's better to go talk to an adult about the situation because they'll be able to better analyze what you give them and act on it accordingly. A teenager can't do that, and you can't fault them for not acting accordingly because they simply haven't learned how to do so yet. There's also the problem that some people, online especially, lie about being in the same situation you're in, and they do so for attention. Those people go out of their way to spread that around so that they can get more attention from more people. If Spockter had been in contact with someone like that before, then he might not understand that someone who really does go through something like that might not want it spread around. That's the sad reality of the internet. Unfortunately, because we don't know if you discussed this with him, we can't be sure if that's the case. But I still want to remind you that an online teenager is probably not the person to confide in for stuff like this because they won't be able to handle it in the best way. I also just realized that you also publicly admitted it in this screenshot stash, which you uploaded back in May. So why are you mad at him for publicly saying it to strangers when you are doing the very same fucking thing here? Oh my god, I cannot function. This is transphobic. Kill me. Send porn to a 13 year old. Okay, wait, I'm sorry, what? See, this is a problem with you saying that not all of these claims come from you, because now you're just throwing random stuff out into the ether and expecting it to stick. So for those who hadn't seen Ghosty's original video, at this point they showcase this screenshot. A comment, I'm assuming on Ghosty's earlier video or else a different video on the drama, from someone named Cheerio. I hadn't heard of Cheerio in the drama before, and I can't think of any other videos that mentioned her, so I went looking into things to see what I could find, and... Look, if you haven't yet figured out that every time I go looking into something, we fall into a rabbit hole of suck, then I don't know what to tell you. So, Cheerio claims that Spockter sent her porn when she was 13. Let's not lose sight of the fact that this is presented as is with no other evidence of the claim. I don't even think that Cheerio made a video on it because if she did, I probably would have already seen it when I was combing through the drama videos back in April before my first video was released. Maybe I missed it, that's always a possibility, but in any case, this comment is the only mention of the claims that we have and there's no evidence provided with it. Since she claimed she was sent the porn when she was 13, I went to Twitter and DeviantArt to try and figure out what age she was. There I was able to find out that she's 15 and her birthday is on July 5th. Now, that's a little weird. Spockter just celebrated his two year anniversary on his YouTube channel. Does that mean that she's referring to around the time before Spockter's channel exploded in growth? Because that's when she would have been 13 years old. Spockter also would have been 15 at the time. And while yeah, you might say that still isn't an excuse, he shouldn't be sending porn to someone who's 13, I would totally get where you were coming from, except Cheerio doesn't share in that belief. Yeah, remember when I said I also went to her Twitter? Pro tip kids, Twitter is public! Not only are her tweets from April mysteriously all gone, which is strange considering Cheerio is an avid tweeter, and I can still find tweets from her from around that time, they're simply not there when you check through her dash. Oh, but ponder, that doesn't show that she doesn't think that- <laughs> Let me finish. While I was scrolling through her tweets, I came across a situation that I was personally unfamiliar with. I don't know what happened directly, but what I can glean from the tweets surrounding it was that someone had been allegedly asking for nudes from a minor. Minor, not Spockter, somebody else. Cheerio's response to these allegations? Well, she doesn't demand proof of him doing it, as far as I can tell, that had already been provided. Instead, she says, Stop blaming people for past things they have done. Not everyone matures quickly, and people calling him out for shit that happened years ago is stupid. Uh-huh. Really? didn't know my ass. LMFAO, you literally asked if there was proof of him not changing after seeing shit he did. This is so funny. Can you and the crew please leave me alone? Y'all are like hate following. It's pathetic. I got proof and so I understand now. Fuck off. If you make a call out about someone to try and get them to realize their mistakes, like, that makes sense, and I get your reasoning, but what call outs really do is just get the person harassed, witch hunted, and it can lead to straight up bullying. If you want to get me to realize mistakes I have done, tell me privately. Tell me privately so I can apologize to you. Tell me privately so it won't lead to people harassing both me and you. Mm-hmm. See, that's a little weird considering this comment doesn't look all too private. 
This almost looks like a public comment in response to a bunch of callout videos that were made on Spockter. Reminder that those screenshots you just saw were from June 8th and June 9th, less than two months after the Spockter drama. Yeah, I guess. It's still kind of frustrating though. I wish people could be a bit more civil. I know that when people say something that's really offensive, it might be hard to be civil. I just wish people would talk it out first before throwing labels on me. Man, I'm really thinking about making a video on call-out culture. I hate it with every fiber of my being. Oh, ho, ho, ho. I'm sure you do. One final note about Cheerio before we move on. Found this in her tweets too. I jacked off a little bit too hard and I almost had a heart attack. How is your day fucking going? This is from June 2nd. Her birthday is July 5th. She's 14 in this image. Gee, it's almost like teens are sexual or something and don't have a fucking filter. Ghosty. This? Presenting this in the video as it was, only the comment without looking into it? This is not okay. You can't just believe people at face value like this and then continue to propagate that face value belief across your platform to other people, especially with something this serious. Cheerio gave nothing to showcase that what she was saying was true. Maybe it was, maybe it wasn't. She didn't give you anything to determine which it was. Remember when I just said how you shouldn't expect other teenagers your age to react well when presented with serious information because they don't know how to address it, look into it, or handle it accordingly? Yeah, it's almost like your behavior right here is indicative of that notion. Jesus, you kids. I also just found out that apparently Cheerio used to be called Darling QQ, and I vaguely know who that was, and I have only ever heard bad things, so I'm moving on. Use private art without permission nor credit. Oh, bugger off. When you create artwork for a big YouTuber who has a habit of featuring said artwork at the end of the video, the implication that the art you've made is probably going to end up in one of those videos is already there. Unless you can provide a screenshot from the conversation where the artist said, hey, I'd appreciate it if you didn't put my art in one of your videos, then your complaint is dumb and completely ignores the implied social expectations of the situation. Order an SFW art of his... Um of a minor, which is illegal. I apologize for that bad reading. Ghosty's words sometimes jumble together and I couldn't understand entirely what they were saying here. I think they said that he orders not safe for work art of his OC while being a minor and that's illegal, which as far as I know, it's not illegal for a minor to ask for it. It's illegal for artists knowing that the person asking is a minor to then give them said not safe for work artwork. Even then, ghosty, do I have to bring this up again? And you draw smut yourself. Why are you propped up on such a high horse? You are going to fall. You held a contest for people to make it suggestive slash SFW art for minor without them knowing. No, he didn't. The porn rule stated, uh, um, wait, fuck. The contest rule stated- Jeez, I think these guys are starting to get to me. The contest rule stated that there was to be no porn or overly lewd nudity. Drawing suggestive artwork is not a crime. Sending non-porn to a minor unknowingly is also not a crime. I encourage people to make NSFW art form despite being a minor. <laughs> was very sexual towards another person a few months later. For this point, Ghosty brings up the screenshots provided by stories, and I think at this point we all know why that's bullshit. Psst. If you haven't seen the other videos, it's because stories blatantly cropped out sections of the conversation and presented them in a way so that she could make Spectre look bad so that she could expose him. Sent nudes to a minor despite them not giving consent. This is also stories. The girl who sent nudes to Spectre first in an attempt to bait him into sending some back. We'll get into that. That's all that's out so far. Now on to why his apology is the worst video to honestly exist. Now, I understand giving him a second chance if this was the first time he apologized. I brought up stuff he did to me a few months ago around July or August. He told me the exact same things in that video, that he changed and realized what he did wrong and it was because of hormones and he'll go on a break and reconstruct himself. I. I gave him a second chance, and he had that second chance, and he said everything he said, yet the same fucking thing a few months later. No, he actually didn't do the same thing a few months later. For one thing, Stories, the girl he purportedly did the same thing with, was actively engaging in the sexual conversations with him, which is the complete opposite of you since you yourself said that you were hesitant to do as much. So Spockter kept his promise to you to learn from his mistake and not do it again. Spockter recognized your issue with him potentially being too forceful. Oh, that's right. How many of you have seen this image, huh? I wouldn't be surprised if you hadn't, mostly because up 
until Spectre was able to find and release the rest of the conversation, this was the one that had been circulating, and I certainly know that Ghosty knew about this one, because it was one of the screenshots Ghosty showed when talking about how Spectre had sent nudes to a minor without giving consent. So Ghosty's justification as to why the apology was bullshit was bullshit itself, because it was based on a lie spread around by the other accuser. He was aware of what he was doing. This is gonna seem like a really stupid claim when I get around to stories as journals. Yeah. Journals. He didn't care because he never thought his ass would be busted. He only cares now because of his reputation. Not because he's sorry for what he's done. If he was sorry for what he's done, he would have changed when I confronted him. Not when all of this went public. Pretty sure he was mostly concerned because people were calling him a child predator, which wasn't true, and those are kind of serious accusations that can ruin a person's life. And, as we'll see in your next video, came about because of a misunderstanding from another lie that stories told earlier in the year. Spoilers, the lie was that she was eight years old. Not to mention the hormone excuse is total bullshit. Like I said, He's used it before, and that could possibly a one-off. I'd understand, but he's used this twice. You can't blame your own action on hormones. You do not turn into a completely different person when you're going through puberty, and become blind to what's blatantly wrong. That's like saying, hey, I know, I just killed this person, but dude, I was on my period, okay? Puberty doesn't turn you into a completely different person. Yes, it does! That is exactly what puberty does! People often make jokes about how teenagers are clinically insane because the changes they go through during puberty essentially means that's the case. It effectively sets a teenager's brain on fire. Fire. They don't have the cognitive ability to think forward and plan based on the potential consequences of their actions or the actions of another person. They can't regulate their emotions. They're horny all the goddamn time. They have unregulated mood swings, low self-esteem, aggression. People can develop depression during puberty precisely because of the hormonal and chemical changes going on in their brains. Like, these are all things that puberty does to a person. It can turn you into a completely different person. It does. What are you even talking about? Trust me, once you hit 25, you will look back on your high school self and think, Wow, I was really stupid! It's a ridiculous excuse, and if this did happen in court, it would be voided for how fucking dumb it is. Oh, there are a lot of other things that would come into play if this was in court, I can tell you that! How many chances are you going to give this guy? He's a sexual offender. He's not just called someone a bitch over the internet. It's more serious than that. He said everything he's done but he didn't change. So why would he know? You can't just give someone who's done this shit more chances. He's just gonna keep repeating himself like he's done. I... I don't understand. He said everything in that video to me before. Word for word. But he didn't fucking change. So why would he now? I'm actually not gonna say anything about this section. Instead, I'm gonna save it and bring it up again later on. Either way, that's the end of Ghosty's section on the drama. I'm 28 pages in, people. Let's continue. Let's go. Let's go. If you think you are being manipulated, blackmailed, or groomed by someone older than you online, it is important to send information to the people who can help the most. The National Center for Missing and Exploited Children is goal-centered on helping to reduce the instances of child sexual exploitation and that includes in online cases. You can contact them and send them the information that you have. They will, in turn, pass it off to the proper authorities who will look into the case and see if it has merit. Those law enforcement officers might later contact you on the matter via email for more information to better help them root out the truth and punish those who need to be punished. It can be dangerous being a kid online, especially if you think think that someone is preying on you. Please turn to those who have the power to stop it. If you feel like you're being victimized, send them an email and let them help you. You can also go over to their site for more information on how to protect yourself online. Okay, so before we get to the final video from Ghosty, I want to actually go back and readdress the screenshots that Ghosty provided as evidence of Spockter's deeds. I know we've already talked about them before, but uh, remember in the last video when I said that juicy things exist? That's mostly because I figured out a bit of an issue with Ghosty's screenshots and how they're presented that I hadn't noticed when I did my first video on all of this. Firstly, when I went over that one screenshot, filled in the text, and surmised that it was the 12-year-old that Ghosty claimed Spockter had been sexually talking to, 
I was wrong. When Ghosty presented this screenshot, amidst the rest of their evidence, I saw that Spockter referred to someone calling him Daddy, and connected it to the previous claim that Ghosty had made, saying that Spockter was being sexually explicit with a 12-year-old. In fact, this screenshot is not from the 12-year-old in question. It's from Ghosty. Actually, so is this one, and this one, and this one, and huh. You know, it's kind of weird that all of these screenshots seem to have come from Ghosty themselves. However, I suppose that shouldn't be too much of a surprise, because why would Ghosty be presenting screenshots that weren't from them? Can't even fathom why I might have thought that. Oh, but actually, maybe it has something to do with the titles of the screenshots themselves and the description of the main stash they were presented in. What main stash, I hear you ask? Well, it just so happened to be the one that I got all these screenshots from. Thanks, FNGR. Wouldn't have found them without that link in the description of your video where you also called Spockter a pedophile. Here we can see a bunch of the claims that Ghosty has levied against Spockter, and we can also see that the collected screenshots have been sorted into folders based on their content. Two of the folders in particular are of note because they are titled Explicit Convos with Minors and Want not safe for work for minors. Well, that's a little odd, considering every single one of the screenshots Ghosty gives us in this stash are from their conversations with Spockter, no one else's, so why list the minors in question as plural when you're only presenting evidence from one minor? Said minor being yourself. It's almost like that's worded in a way that would trick people reading the screenshots into thinking that they were from multiple people. Huh. Also, I just want to focus on the 12-year-old claim for a bit here. I've heard through the grapevine that the alleged 12-year-old was not actually 12 years old. She was, instead, 14. Now, granted, I've only heard this from other people, and I don't have any screenshots showcasing as much. Funny thing, though, there exists just as much evidence for the claim that the 12-year-old was actually 14 as there exists from the claim that Spockter was being sexual with the 12-year-old in the first place. Yeah, because if the screenshot I originally thought was from the 12-year-old was actually from Ghosty, then that means we don't have any screenshots to support this accusation. The only thing we have to say that this happened is people going, Guys, Spockter totally did this! Sure. In that case, I was the most popular person in high school. I dated the high school quarterback and he proposed to me on prom night. I was a straight A student and all of the teachers loved me. I helped the principal catch his cheating wife and so he would bow to me every time I came into school. I made honors and graduated valedictorian. At the end of the year ceremony, they asked me to come up to the podium and even though I hadn't prepared a speech beforehand, I spoke what was on my mind and all the teachers had to wipe away the tears that they were crying and everybody clapped r slash that happened. I know this is the third video I've made on Spockter, but it's going to be the last, and I'm so... It's more of an apology. However, I will go into more detail later. Firstly, I want to say I didn't know about the story stuff. Spockter posted something saying she never said no, or she encouraged it. I don't know about that, so I... I didn't know it was that sketchy, so don't come to me with that. <sighs> See, I'd like to not come to you about that, especially since you're apologizing, but no, ghosty. No! You presented stories as screenshots as evidence for what Spockter had done in your last two videos. Yes, stories manipulated people. She cropped the screenshots to make it look like something was happening when it wasn't. What she couldn't crop effectively, she filled in those gaps with her own recounting of what happened, which, paired with the screenshots, made people view them as being related and truthful. In that sense, because of all that happened because of her lies, stories is at fault there. But you are still at fault for presenting the very same evidence and using it alongside your own claims. You have have to take responsibility for that. When someone comes to you about that, it's because you did it. And that wasn't the only instance of it. You did the very same thing when Chiryu came to you claiming that Spockter sent her porn when she was 13, and Chiryu not only provided no evidence on that front, you didn't even have anything more on it outside of the one comment from her that you showed, which you used as evidence of the claim. That being said, like I said earlier, Ghosty did come to me in DMs and acknowledges their fault and their mistakes on this matter, so while I most just spelling out exactly what the mistakes were for the sake of it being a learning experience. You know, it's all formalities at this point. Secondly, I'd like to apologize for one thing that everyone is bashing me about for calling Spockter a pedophile in one of my videos. I wasn't talking about what he did to my 13 year old friends, nor me, or anything about that. I was talking about, I was told that he sent nudes and stuff to an 8 year old, which I believed, and I should have gotten proof that they weren't that age. Yet, 
I never thought of it, as I don't know stories personally, and I barely watch any of their content. So I just assumed there was no reason to lie about their age. But I'm sure the person who told me this didn't know either, so I'm not putting the blame on them. Oh, here we go! Let's go. I knew this would come up again. Hey guys, if you don't know who I am, I am just a robot. And I'm mostly well known for doing power scaling videos and commentaries. One of the commentaries I did earlier this year was actually the one you're going to see pop up later in this video. And that video is, Stories is not 8 and Pentagrin is stupid. While nobody was really able to prove me wrong when I questioned the claim that Stories was in fact 8 years old, it doesn't mean I didn't get a lot of comments about it. People questioned why I cared so much that she was pretending to be 8 years old. And honestly, I didn't care. The claim itself isn't the problem. It's what Story could do with that claim that was the problem. And the fact that people were believing an outrageous claim without any proof. And boy did she do the very worst thing with it that she could have. Ghosty didn't know Stories personally. They only heard that Stories claimed to be 8 years old. And when it got out that Stories was the one that Spockter sent nudes to, everyone assumed that meant he sent nudes to an 8-year-old. Stories didn't even have to go out of her way to make herself seem like she was actually 8. She just had to say she was, and hordes of people believed her with absolutely no proof! In that situation, when her claims are not being challenged, even if they didn't make any sense, she's just going to be more and more brazen with what she says. And the reality of the situation is that she knew people were dumb enough to believe she was actually 8, without any real proof. So she probably figured she could ruin Spockter with minimal proof, and people would believe her. The fact that a commentary I did on something that could have been so innocuous, like lying about your age, and it all ended up spiraling into something as serious as this is really telling. You shouldn't just believe people making improbable claims online. You never know what people are up to behind their computer screens. And if you don't question the smaller lies, then you're just going to get worse and worse. Also, side note that I noticed, Ghosty says here, probably should have gotten proof that they were that age, yet I never thought of it as I don't know stories personally and I've barely watched any of their content. But in Ghosty's first video on the drama, they said this. I can only speak from my end, however, the screenshots appearing on screen right now are not mine and I wouldn't be proving them as I physically cannot. However, knowing the person who took them, it's pretty safe to say they're not edited either and can be trusted. You said in your first video that because of who the Discord screenshots came from, namely Stories, their validity could be trusted. Now you're saying that you personally don't know Stories well and that you don't watch her content yourself. What part of I barely know this person is supposed to be enough justification to say this person whom I barely know can totally be trusted? It's almost like he said that in the heat of the moment to try to further validate the evidence against Spockter when you wouldn't have had to if the evidence actually showed what you claimed it does. Thirdly, I just want to apologize for the lack of context in my screenshots, as I know it was bad and I should have provided more. You think? Also, another thing I noticed from Ghosty's first video. Why are all these screenshots on old Skype? Clearly edited, shaking my head. They're on old Skype because I originally took these back in May before Skype got shit. But I got a nice note from one of his white knights asking me to delete them, so I did. But I re-upload them again, as it states here, these were re-uploaded on June of 2017. This is months before all of these videos came out, not just a day or a week, you know? Yeah, they were uploaded months before the drama. Back in May. When was it you said that you and Spockter broke up? May 10th? Huh, that's pretty soon after you two broke up for you to be posting screenshots. What was that phrase someone used before about this totally not being an ex who just mad that they can't get lizard dick? Can't quite place it now. Considering we don't know why the two of you broke up, it almost seems vindictive on your part. Not helping this is the fact that the apology that Spockter gave to you happened on the 6th of June, 2017. Yet despite him apologizing to you then and you at the time having no reason to not believe him, still chose to re-upload the images on June 18th. I also want to point out what was said during Spockter's apology to Ghosty, especially on Ghosty's end. I wanted to apologize to you before I go and drop out of your life. Apologize for wronging you. I wanted to thank you as well for teaching a lesson to me. 
I'm done with dating for a good while. Nice to see you actually apologize for once. Oh my god, you guys, it's 3 a.m. and I'm putting together the audio and I had to step aside to do another recording because I just realized Ghosty says that Spockter apologized multiple times but kept making the same mistakes. And yet here in the screenshot, Ghosty is saying, nice to see you apologizing for once. Implying that he doesn't do it very often. <laughs> Can we please? Pick one. <laughs> Just for once. Can we please? Until I'm in college. I'm sorry for legit, like, being forceful on you. You weren't forceful. <laughs> it was all forceful and rushed. It was rushed, though. I was rushing. Ugh. I know it felt like I was demanding stuff, but I didn't intend that. And thinking back, it probably came off as demanding, and that's a problem. I'll fix it. I don't care about your apologies anymore. You've apologized multiple times to multiple people, but you haven't changed a single bit. So why would you change this time? Because your reputation is at risk? If that's the case, it's pretty fucking sad that that's what it takes for you to realize how much shit you've done. If this is how you want to be, then that's fine. But your friend will have left you and you'll end up all alone. I'm only just come back. If my presence is truly a pain to people, I'm willing to let them go. I don't want to hurt people, that's not why I'm here. The only way you'll know of change is by waiting. So give it time, you'll see. You've said that over and over, but there's never been any results. How many times are you going to say that before you actually change? How would you know unless you wait? Nothing I say here and now will matter. You won't get satisfaction from it. Wait, wait? Do you have any idea how much patience I've had to have you just see you screwing over multiple friends? What are you saying will indeed have no effect since you're not going to change and pull the shit off on other people in the future? I respect your opinion, you hate me. Just wanted to let you know I apologize. Nothing I'm saying now is, if, is a v v v v v bitch. Nothing I'm saying now is of significance, so I'll just let you go. <laughs> DM review! <laughs> Have you noticed what's weird about this? I'll give you a hint. It has to do with the timeline that Ghosty established regarding when the two of them started dating. Spockter and Ghosty dated for, at most, half a month. That was it. They broke up, and as far as we can glean from this conversation, Spockter took a break for a period of time and was likely gone. I.e., when Ghosty says that Spockter hasn't changed and that he's apologized but keeps making the same mistakes, what the fuck is Ghosty even talking about? You expect me to believe that in half a month, Spockter has apologized for these mistakes multiple times, continued to make the same mistakes in between all of that, taken a break, and screwed over and driven away a whole bunch of people? In half a fucking month? Ghosty's reaction here is absolutely ridiculous. For one thing, we don't actually have any other screenshots outside of the ones that Ghosty has already provided to us to indicate that Spockter has either continued to make these mistakes or apologized for them in the past. For another thing, the two of them dated for half a month at most. Ghosty posted the screenshots after they broke up. Spockter took a break, Ghosty took down the screenshots, and then Spockter came back to apologize. Is that the timeline I'm getting from this? Freaking where in any of that is there even the room for Spockter to continue to make the same mistakes over and over again like you're claiming he did? Also, Ghosty says that they're not going to believe that Spockter can change because they've given him time and he hasn't changed for the better, but how much do you expect a person to change in half a fucking month? I can't be the only one who notices that this timeline, based on what Ghosty is claiming happened, doesn't make a lick of sense. I just went down another rabbit hole of a tangent, didn't I? Heck, and this was supposed to be on the apology too, good lord! Back to the video. Yeah, I'm not trying to make excuses, but I was going off of things I had sent people before and I'm sorry for the stammering, I, I can't help it. I was going off of things I had sent people before and my Skype refuses to load after a certain point, I physically cannot get them anymore, so I apologize for that, like I've said. And I really don't want to get involved with this personally. I'm going to drop all the accusations I made on my end, such as the sexual stuff towards me, and I don't want to get involved, like I said. No, 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 no. That's not how that works. In your first video, you showed us where you could scroll up to in your Skype chat with Spockter when you can be bothered. But the conversations you show here was included in your screenshots, and that screenshot shows that the conversation is from May 2nd, a few days after the two of you started dating. Even if that was as high as you could scroll up, you should have been able to scroll down and show everything leading up to the breakup. You chose not to. Even if you couldn't get all of the context, you should have been able to show everything past the 2nd of May. So this isn't an excuse. 
I am 100% aware it was my fault for originally getting involved in this in the first place, and I should have been prepared. But I wasn't, and it's taken quite a big toll on my mental and physical health, so I would appreciate a break. I don't care if you make videos on me, just don't tag them and spam me with them, thank you. And so, there's only one thing that I do stand by, and it's the fact he pushed my 13-year-old friend into making that NSFW. I don't have the screenshots for him doing it initially, but I only have the things of him going on moving to Skype, uh, and him begging her to make it, such as bribing and such, which is here, and yeah, and if she is, if he is offering bribes t towards her and several times, that obviously suggests she did not want to do it in the first place, and I hope you can take my word for that. Still not how that works. Look, maybe Spockter was doing that. The garbage fire that has been this whole situation, however, should make it pretty apparent that you can't just take people at their word. Ghosty, it is irresponsible of you to still be asking this of people when so much of what you've provided earlier was completely wrong. You even promoted stories as word despite not knowing her purpose. Personally, you already asked people to believe you at your word, and you spread false allegations and lies. You can't seriously still be asking for that. Also, bribing for art is still not a thing. That's a commission. But yeah, I want to apologize once again overall and for the misfortune and false accusations that have been spreading around. It was an entire fault on everyone making those videos due to the misconceptions that happened, yes, about the transphobia thing. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, yeah, okay, um, this particular part of Ghosty's video coming up, I'm not actually gonna talk about it. I'm also not having my friend read it off, and it's for one very simple reason. The reasoning behind Ghosty's identifying as non-binary is not as cut and dry as I had originally surmised in my first video on the matter. While I'm still of that general mindset, and it'll take brain scans revealing the presence of non-binary mentality being a thing to convince me otherwise, in Ghosty's particular case, I can completely understand. So on that note, I do want to apologize to Ghosty for making assumptions. It was admittedly based on a very bad history on Tumblr, with lots of people demanding I believe things outright with no evidence to support their claims, and the entire experience left a very bad taste in my mouth. That, however, doesn't really excuse it here in my opinion. I will continue to respect a person's pronouns and the way in which they choose to identify themselves, but to you, Ghosty, I apologize if I offended or hurt you in that original video. Now, if I could give some advice. The reason I'm not gonna play this section of the video is pretty simple, and it's also the reason I think I was wrong about Ghosty's situation in the first video. Ghosty mentioned something that you can tell from the video is quite personal. It's vague in its wording, but there's enough there that I was able to gleam what the personal issue might be, and I worry about other people potentially figuring it out too. To protect Ghosty's privacy on that matter, we won't be talking about it. Ghosty, I recognize that this is probably a tasking issue for you in your personal life, and I understand that you might want to keep it a private matter. I would just say that if that's the case, be a tad more careful with your wording in the future. Granted, I could be completely wrong in what I got from your wording, but just in case, I think it's better to play on the safer side of things. Ghosty just finishes the video off saying thank you and sorry again, so we're done with their video on the drama. At this point, I think I've said all that I need to on Ghosty regarding all of this, so let's move on to my favorite part. By which I mean it's going to involve me getting a whole bunch of people to read off lines for me, and trying to organize that is such a hassle. The screenshots! Ponder, what sort of screenshots could you possibly have that would express anything more than we've already seen? Honey, let's just say there's a benefit to waiting a couple months to put a video out. So for those who are unaware, and I believe I mentioned this in the last video, after my first video on the drama came out, Atari gave me access to the Discord server where she, Pentagon, and Stories had been planning their exposed videos. It was in here where they compiled and discussed the evidence they had on Spockter and how they were going to go about presenting it. Oh, oh no, wait, wait a minute, my bad. This is actually from the Anti-Digbert Collective, that you know, other server where they were planning to take down or expose or whatever, Digby the Goat. It's a tad indicative that the whole expose video thing could have happened to anyone. It just so happened to be that, like sharks, a certain couple of people smelled blood in the water and they went for that one instead. Digby wasn't bleeding enough. Also, thank you again to Mimi Diggs for providing these screenshots because knowing this group existed a month before the Spockter videos is fantastic. Especially considering Pentagon seemed all too happy to get Spockter in on taking down
down Digby. I mean, she was discussing as much with Atari back in 2017. She didn't even have a problem with using him to do her dirty work. But all of a sudden, when someone releases a video saying that she's dumb for believing that someone who is clearly not eight years old is actually eight years old, and Spockter, the very gall of the man, comments on the video saying thanks because he also didn't believe the eight-year-old was actually eight years old, then that boy must burn. Clearly, he and Just a Robot were in cahoots. Clearly, Spockter endorsed the video and helped it get made. Like, I'll admit, I can get conspiratorial at times, but how the hell do you get this bad? So do I. Collab with me. I don't know, I would love to address how Story isn't eight, but nobody would listen because they're brainwashed. She's actually nine. Same thing. You fool! You really believe that, don't you? Poor Lizard Boy was actually someone that Pentagram wanted to drag down because he thought that someone was lying about their age online and appreciated it being called out in a video. Apparently, that was enough excuse for her to go for the throat, as she herself puts it. Oh, but evidently, despite also having wanted to get him in on taking down Digby in November of 2017, she's been waiting to take Spockter down for a while. Well now, isn't that a tad telling? And isn't it so equally telling that she tried to rewrite history while working on her exposed video, claiming that this was a recent development and she hadn't been planning this when we know that you'd been gunning for Spockter since at least January of this year. You wouldn't need to be so cautious of your reputation if you were a decent human being. While this claim is hilarious and deliciously hypocritical in hindsight, it actually paints a very naive understanding of just how gross and spiteful humans can be. You can be a decent person and still have someone not like you. You can be a decent person and still have someone that wants to take you down. The passing of Stan Lee in November of this year is a good example of that. Despite the joy and wonder and love that this sweet man brought throughout his lifetime, how much he promoted other people to be creative and tolerant, and how encouraging he was to young startups, and how passionate he was about his own work. The day he died, people tried to destroy his image by making claims about him that were not true. Due to the fact that he was successful and had money, his golden years were filled with turmoil because greedy people wanted it for themselves. He was a victim of elder abuse. His friends and fans were worried for him. He had been nothing but a sweetheart to people, and still there were those who wanted to hurt him, who wanted to take advantage of him, who wanted to destroy him, and who wanted to ruin his reputation. A lot of this want to destroy the reputation of someone more popular than you is to get a taste of that popularity yourself. Some people create things to try and get a taste of that popularity, but that is a long and arduous process. It's easier for most people to simply try and destroy and then bask in the glow from toppling that empire. It should come as a surprise to no one that this actually was one of the subjects of focus within the chat itself. Pentagrin especially seemed quite focused on Spockter's dwindling sub count. Not only was this in a reaction to the video being released, it was also something that Pentagrin made note of on the 17th, before their videos had even been finished, and before they had even finished compiling their evidence. She was quite fixated on the effect this would have on Spockter's subscriber count. Pentagram can reminisce all she wants about how only bad people have bad things said about them, but her own actions, and the actions of the person whom she tried to protect in all of this, effectively prove her stance incorrect. I mean, it's not like Pentagram has a track record of having no self-awareness and speaking highly of herself, only to completely go back on those high standards she set when it's convenient for her. Also, yes, that is Pentagram speaking with Satan, quite apropos. Atari, shock of all shocks, was the one who eventually came to her senses and decided to close the group. Reminder, even after everything that's happened during the planning process for their exposed videos, Atari's the only one who, when presented with the knowledge that the information she spread may have been gathered under false pretenses and didn't show what she'd been told they did, she accepted fault and tried to learn from it to better herself as a person. Good girl. Would draw fan art. Anyways, back to the server. This is actually the server I was talking about. It was in here that they planned out the Stay Away From Spockter Theory videos. Most of the pre-planning leading up to the video contained in here, as well as a good chunk of the evidence sharing, happened in the span of two days. When Atari first granted me access to the server, I went through and screenshotted what I thought was of note, but I've since gone back through the bulk of the server two more times. Most recently, it was because of a larger revelation that I came across while scripting for this video. We'll get into that in a bit. First, I want to go through some of the server piece by piece in the order the events took place. The beginning of the chat starts off with Pentagrin Stories and Atari compiling what evidence they have on Spockter. So far, this is mostly Pentagrin showcasing her own screenshots from talking with him. That includes them talking about his ex, which, yeah, Pentagrin, his ex was blackmailing him. They documented segments of their conversation that made him look bad, ignoring their own active participation in it, uploaded them online almost immediately after the two broke up, and then uploaded them again after he apologized to them, their excuse for that being that he wasn't changing fast enough when only a month had passed, and threatened to expose him if he continued to act in the way that they didn't like. So, yeah. 
That actually totally was blackmail. The screenshots also cover them talking about an 18 plus room in Spockter's server, when Spockter made note of an art thief, Penagrin agreeing with his actions at the time, and talking about Ghosty blackmailing him again. Then we get into the good stuff. Like stories flat out admitting when talking to Spockter she wasn't expressing her true feelings. In fact, according to her, she was expressing the complete opposite of how she really felt. What was that story said in her video on the matter? But he had decided to continue regardless of me stating that I was uncomfortable, or that I had a boyfriend, or even hinting that something was wrong. Spockter, if you're watching this, in your echo chamber of adoring fans, I never want to associate with you again. You're disgusting in every sense of the word, and looking at your responses to mine make my stomach turn into knots and make my hands turn stone cold. You did this to yourself. If you had any common sense you would have turned away, but you didn't. That's really what disappoints me. I partially made note of this when I covered Stories' recounting of the situation in my first video, but now we have confirmation from Stories herself that she purposely didn't express her true feelings in her conversations with Spockter. At the time, however, she tries to condemn him because she was uncomfortable and supposedly disgusted with how he acted. Yet if she purposely was hiding those feelings from him, then how was he supposed to know that? You can't expect people to recognize that you're uncomfortable with a situation if you act like you're totally fine with it. And you certainly don't get to pretend after the fact that the person in question was a manipulative villain who didn't care that you were uncomfortable, which is exactly what Stories is doing here. Something I also noticed when going back through the chat a couple times was when Atari questioned Stories' is, well, story. Incidentally, Stories never responds to these instances. Since each instance only came up once, I can't blame Atari for not picking up on this, but Stories' unwillingness to answer these specific questions or concerns is quite telling. When Stories provides screenshots of Spockter's messages, she doesn't screenshot what she said to elicit such a response. She only makes claims as to what she said. In response to me saying I'm flustered, I asked him if he had a crush. Stories very deliberately did not show what she said in these conversations. There isn't a reason for Stories to not show these sections of the conversation if they were truly as innocuous as she's implying they were. If she had nothing to hide with her own parts of the conversation, then why is she hiding them? We've already seen that Stories is willing to to cut out the context of a situation to better serve her purpose. Regarding these very screenshots, she cut out the fact that Spockter backed down when she said she was uncomfortable just so that she could push the narrative that he never did. And remember when Story said that she was deliberately saying the opposite of how she actually felt? That she claimed to have a crush on Spockter that she feels he took advantage of? That it was bad for him at his age, acknowledging his age to be doing what he was doing with her because of how young she was? Wouldn't it be really telling if it was somehow revealed that Stories was still not expressing how she truly felt, that she was deliberately manipulating the situation to get the desired effect out of those involved, that she was even making exceptions as to what she did and did not think was okay expressly so that she could vilify Spockter for them? Well, she would have had to have this plan in mind months ahead of time if that were the case. Everybody, I'd like to introduce you to Cardiamente also known as Kyra. Remember the boyfriend that Stories mentioned having while she was talking with Spockter? I wish I could have called him out on it the first chance I got. I had always warned him to be careful out of pure care for others. Now, considering she had this boyfriend at the time of trying to gather evidence on Spockter, and at the time of making her video condemning Spockter, particularly for his sexual messages towards her despite their age difference, it would be really awkward if Kyra and Spockter just so happened to be the same age. Kyra is a couple months older than Spockter. Wow, weird! Stories happen to be dating someone who turned 17 months before Spockter did, and yet she still goes on to condemn Spockter for being his 17-year-old self, actually 16 at the time, and hitting on her? The very nerve of him! Oh, but that's not the only way that Kyra comes into play here. You see, Kyra got into contact with me on Discord and has been very helpful. He gave me access to... Probably the most compelling evidence showcasing that Story is headed out for Spockter. And the timing of that evidence in particular really is the kicker. Kyra added me to a server that I had never seen before, but I did recognize one of the names in that server. If you've been keeping up with how things unfolded after my first video came out, then you might recognize Honey Bear as being one of Stories' alternate accounts. We'll talk about what she was doing on that alt account when we further discuss what happened after my video came out. Now, most of what was contained within that server was just not important. Memes and empty chats mostly. There were only really two things of note, and only one of them is what I'm going to be discussing here. The Spockter Journal. There are three entries in here. They're from December 24th, 2017, two of them, and January 2nd, 2018. 
They read as follows. So you may be wondering why I really cared enough to dig deep on Spockter and find out his secrets and stuff. The answer is simple. I hated him at first. I faked having a romantic interest in Spockter. Spockter was just another way for me to make my stomp on the little section of the internet history books, social engineering and all that. Whether it would be by force or by willing help from him, I was determined to make my name known and get to the bottom of what makes this man a boy. What does he keep hidden behind his facade? What can I pry out of him? What would these secrets hold? And were they of value? I don't know. And like any other information, how can I spark a fire and burn this proclaimed hero to a crisp? I wasn't going to literally douse the child in gasoline and make a cookout using his body. Yeesh, it's a metaphor. Heroes and gods, both held to the same regard. Always. But everyone has an Achilles heel. Makes them vulnerable. And to someone who fakes their persona, life, personality, and talents online, they have multiple vulnerabilities that only someone with a knack for manipulating systems and social cracks would see. So, I got to work. But more on that tomorrow. I'm tired. It's currently 4.03 a.m., but I'm saying it's a minute ahead because I'm a weird perfectionist that way. Christmas Eve. Stories. To add on to the fact that I faked a romantic interest, it wasn't real. It was convincing. It's for my gain to get on his good side since humans weaken at flattery. Ugh, weak humans. It grew on me. It led to my sadness of me expressing my artificially made feelings to Spockter and him not acting on it which I'm grateful for. Side note, while I promise not to show these particular screenshots for the sake of the other party involved, Stories freaked the fuck out when she found out that I had been given access to her server and she'd been kicked and she demanded that none of what was contained within be shared, including her journals on Spockter. Now, while I did read and screenshot everything of note in there, I'm not gonna use it because it's not all related. But one thing that her reaction to the situation does show. Stories mildly alludes to the importance of information when she's talking about Spockter, and she does the same thing in her other journals, going far more in depth there. She talks about how useful information is and how it's effectively power, yet she expects only herself to have this power. She freaked out because now, all of a sudden, I had this information on her. She demanded demands to have information on and they're in power over everyone else, but screams and lashes out should anyone dare find anything on her. Just thought that was kind of interesting. Regarding the journals as a whole, I have trouble making an assessment of it, not because I'm confused about what's going on, far from it, but because my current view of stories comes from the fact that I have also read her personal journals, and I have promised not to use said personal journals in this video. It's difficult for me to talk about this knowing what I know, or at the very least, knowing what I have read, because Lord knows I can't trust a single word that comes out of that child's mouth. Stories freaked out and demanded that nothing that Kyra, probably her ex-boyfriend now, I certainly can't keep up with that, exposed to me be used against her. She raged about how her privacy had been violated, and how her life had been ruined, and how I had destroyed her chance to have a career on the platform, but I find it difficult to sympathize with these journals now shown to me. Stories didn't seem to have a problem with a person's privacy being violated when she was deliberately doing it to Spockter. She didn't seem to have an issue with baiting nudes out of him and then using his private conversations with her to spread around the notion that he was a pedophile in his friend groups. She didn't seem to have a problem with cutting out context from private screenshots to turn Spockter into a villain and a child predator. She didn't have an issue with reminiscing about how these exposed videos would ruin Spockter's chances to get his dream career. She had no problem saying what she did, knowing that it would get Spockter shunned in every community he was a part of, or that he loved. She has deliberately gone out of her way to not respect the privacy of others, and so if destroying her privacy is the only way for me to showcase exactly what she's done, then I have no qualms about it. Stories doesn't want this shown, not because it's personal, but because it shows malicious premeditated 
intent. She had planned on destroying Spockter for months, simply because she didn't like him, as far as I can fucking tell. So why she thinks she has any power or say in this matter is beyond me. People have even scoffed at Spockter explaining his impulsive behavior as being a result of his ADHD, but Stories herself has been behind the scenes touting about a mental condition she has, one which her boyfriend has told me he's not even sure which she has been formally diagnosed for, which also causes impulsivity, and she uses it to explain away her behavior. What even is this situation? I will fully admit, trying to come back and write this script has been a hassle for me. I would get anxiety attacks in the middle of trying to work on it. Even just thinking about it would put a tightness in my chest. I don't like the idea of going after some kid who made a mistake online. I don't want to vilify a child for making a mistake. Maybe hearing about child predatory behavior, not fully understanding it, and then ascribing their own experiences to it. But this is not that. Stories planned this. She knew what she was doing. She fucking relished in it. In this situation, she has been vindictive, conniving, discourteous, impudent, and she's shown at the very least to me that she can't be trusted. And for all that is wicked and sullied in the world, it doesn't stop there. And considering from what I've read, she seems to have a weird fascination with the number eight. It should be pretty fitting that someone called the Octomama is the one making this video. Oh good god, maybe she was plotting against me this whole time. Fuck! Let's continue. Oh wow, what a shock! The three fucking time screenshot that we were led to believe was said by stories to Spockter actually came from the server plotting against him and was yet another screenshot taken out of context. So far out of context that it wasn't even from the conversation we as the audience thought it was from. Color me surprised. Throughout the chat, stories flip-flops on whether or not she wants to be named in the implications, citing her reasoning being that people could say she lied. Dumbass! Anyone could say that anyone lied. You're likely only concerned about this because you were lying. This ended up going through, however, since Stories wasn't named as one of the victims in the situation. That only became apparent when she made her own video trying to prove the validity of the screenshots, which just worked out so well. Stories talks about how she doesn't want to catch a case, and to that I'm assuming she meant I don't want to break the law. Too late on that front, I'm afraid. And then immediately, without any self-awareness, infers that the three of them might be able to use one of the photos he sent to her to suggest that he went further. Not that they were going to provide evidence, just that they were going to provide something potentially innocuous and then use it to support an unrelated and far more serious claim. I'm not even surprised by this. And you shouldn't be surprised because she wants to use this same technique a few days later just on someone else. Stories sharing what she shouldn't be, they scoff at the notion of Junkie potentially protecting someone whom he thinks is a child on the internet, when Penegrin herself is protecting someone whom she thinks is a child on the internet. For fuck's sake, this entire chat was created for that very purpose. And I just realized that Stories talked about how she purportedly had a crush on Spockter and she felt that he manipulated that crush, but Stories also acknowledges that Spockter had a crush on her, and she was faking her crush, meaning that she was manipulating his crush on her. Jeez, Stories, projecting much? Ugh, am I done yet? Oh look, Stories admitting that she's been planning this since her channel began. Bro, I've planned it out since my channel was McFrickin' born. I'm the ultimate Chad. I'm fine, Lamau. My entire channel is made for this. Here's the dealio. I joined this community because I knew something was off, and playing stories was just a cover to get into it. And it looks like I found what my suspicions led me to. I originally came here because there was something off about Spockter. I just felt it, you know? So I had to work from the inside out. Uh... Huh, I see. Everything on my channel is all a cover, man. God damn it. James Bond kind of stuff. I guess that makes sense. What does that mean for the future of your channel, then? Turn it into something else. Something that I actually care about instead of playing a character. It was after this flip-flopping when Stories finally admitted to both Penegrin and Atari that she was, in fact, not nine years old. And Penegrin, the stupid, miserable, unapologetic, raise your hand if you're not at all expecting Penegrin to clue in on why this should suddenly be an issue for her. Despite the fact that apparently the entire inciting reason for Penegrin to go after Spockter in the first place was that she thought that Stories was telling the truth about her age and Spockter didn't. Now that she had been presented with the fact from Stories herself that 
that she was, in fact, lying about her age, somehow she doesn't clue in on that, maybe. Maybe Spockter had a good reason to disagree with her. And while yes, you could probably argue that by that point, Pentagrin probably thought that with everything else that had been presented, Spockter was still potentially a bad person. But you would think that when Spockter had been the guy saying, I think this chick is lying, and then that same chick comes to you saying, oh yeah, I was lying, but this guy who thought I was lying was totally being a creeper to me, you would think that something would have clicked in her head and told her, huh, she was already a liar, and she's just admitted that to me. Maybe I should look further into this. But no, of course not. This is Pentagrin we're talking about. Now, I can understand going into a project thinking it's a good idea when it's not. But usually when the project is dragged out for a long period of time, you start questioning whether or not you should do it. I've had projects that I've started working on, walked away from for a couple days, and then came back thinking, hmm, this is kind of petty and unnecessary. Maybe it's not the best idea. Despite Pentagrin having it in her mind to go after Spockter since January, however, she never came to the conclusion that she was doing the video for all the wrong reasons. She never even stepped back to look at the evidence she was being provided at that time. There isn't even a valid excuse for Pentagrin to be so blinded by hatred towards Spockter in the first place. Everyone knows you are nine though, that's the thing. Apparently not Spockter though, you stupid twat! At this point, the roundabout reasoning that Pentagrin tries to use is pathetic. She cites To Catch a Predator saying that while they used 18-year-olds to bait predators, that was only in person, mind you, the predators themselves were still under the assumption that they were talking to minors, that was online, and that's what ends up being the clincher. I understand her reasoning, that being, even if Stories isn't eight, it's the assumption of her being eight, and then still choosing to be sexual with her, that is the crime. The problem here is that Spockter was not under the assumption that Stories was was an eight-year-old. He was vehemently against that notion. That's why you wanted to go after him in the first fucking place. She continues to have absolutely no self-awareness in citing that her own boyfriend had to deal with an issue like this where he had been dating someone who was younger than him when he turned 18. She cites it because nothing sexual happened between the two of them after he turned 18, there was no legal issue. She also makes note that someone, her wording is garbage here, I can't actually tell if she's referring to her boyfriend or someone else, turned 18 while they were dating a 15-year-old and people started calling them a pedophile. Now. Not only is this indicative of the relationship between Stories and Spockter, because Pentagrin tried doing the same thing to Spockter right after he turned 17, the fact that he hasn't actually reached adult age yet doesn't even clue in with her. The legal problems that arise from being in a relationship with someone younger than you only happens if one party is of legal age and the other isn't. But both Spockter and Stories were under the age of consent. She doesn't even cite the exchange of images between them as being the problem. She explicitly talks about sexual stuff, and if she did try to condemn Spockter for sending nudes, then she would have to condemn stories too, because they're both underaged and they both sent each other images. Oh no, wait, I'm sorry! She does try to condemn Spockter for everything in the situation and continues to completely ignore the fact that stories was the inciting party. It's almost like she admitted to doing as much! And while Pentagrin makes note that they can't call him a pedophile in their videos themselves, she still tries to be sneaky about it. We, at the time of scripting, were under the impression that she was nine. No, you were goddamn not, you sneaky little troglodyte! You were just told that Stories was not nine. You just made note that you had to go back through the script and reword things. You do not get to pretend ignorance now. That is irresponsible and is lying by way of omission. At the time that this was happening, we were under the impression that she was nine. Under the impression is the key phrase. I hope you see how diabolically sneaky these two tried to be in what they were doing. Even though Pentagrin is now fully aware that Stories is not in fact nine years old, she still tries to act as though she made the video under that assumption. Pentagrin also had the gall to claim to me that she didn't endorse the pedophilia label within her video despite this garbage having gone on behind closed doors. Furthermore, Pentagrin, that's not how that works. You were an avid supporter of the the notion that Stories was telling the truth about her age and that she was, at the time, an eight-year-old. We know this because you made a video about it. You remember that, don't you? The one that Just a Robot did a commentary on and then you tried to use as a reason to hate Spockter for? If someone goes around saying, I'm an eight-year-old, and you make a video saying, yeah, they're an eight-year-old, and then you make a video claiming that someone
someone sent that person nudes, even if you don't say they're an eight-year-old in that video, the implication is there. Your audience can connect the dots. Stories claims to be eight. Spockter sent nudes to someone. That someone is stories. Therein, Spockter sent nudes to an eight-year-old. You don't have to say the word. Everything else you promoted led people there. I would also like to point out that while the original Exposed video claimed that Spockter had been doing this to many people and they had heard about it from these people, it was actually only stories and ghosty. There was one other person stories made note of who wasn't actually making any complaints against Spockter. So that was also a lie. Also, can we just appreciate the Pentagon saying that someone hate mobbed against an alleged pedophile despite there being no evidence and uses that as a reason to say that they shouldn't use her and she's a simpleton? And yet, also, whoops! At this point, the video goes up. Heck, even before I made note of my distaste for the evidence in the videos, someone else messaged Atari with a similar concern. Also, shut up, Stories. Stories uses emotional manipulation within the chat. I mean, she herself said that humans weaken to flattery, so why not respond to someone questioning the evidence by wholeheartedly thanking Atari and Pentagon for helping you deal with such an emotionally tasking feat? We get some hilarious foreshadowing. And then Spockter's apology video came out. Remember how I told you about how Stories freaked out when she found out I had access to the journals where she plotted against Spockter back in December of 2017? Stories is really good at projecting is what I'm saying. I would also like to make note of the fact that Stories apparently knew Spockter's state and had looked into what the consent laws were there. Oh, but why is she talking about that here? You may be asking. Why? It just so happens that this is when I stepped into the ring. When I first made note that I had an issue with the video and hopped into a Discord call with Pentagon and Atari, you can bet there was a reaction in the Spockter chat. It died down after the call, but the very next day was when Pentagon bailed off the internet. I didn't actually notice that at first. It was literally the day after we spoke and like, you guys, I know that stories you implied it's bad for YouTubers to get an ego and makes you want to tear them down and expose them for only being human, but how can I not get a bit of an ego when y'all are treating me like I'm some big fancy smanchy internet personality? You can make a girl's head quite big with how you treated me. Don't worry, I won't forget the little people like you when I'm a big star. Anyways, and then my video came out. Why are we still here? Just to suffer. Every night, I can feel my leg, and my arm, even my fingers. Let's go. If you're planning to take down someone that you don't like via slanderous claims of sexual harassment six months in advance, here's something to consider. DON'T! So while most of what happened after my video came out just seems like children crying and yelling because someone took a knife out of their hands, there were a few instances of note that I want to bring up. First of all, Pentagon also apparently went around saying that I had gotten Dulu to illegally record her, and I know this to be the case because someone came to me on DeviantArt asking me about that very thing. Well, gee, considering I said in my video that Pentagon had acknowledged and been aware that Dulu was recording at the time, how could this person possibly have gotten the opposite impression? In the note, they explained that Pentagon said she was aware that Dulu was recording with OBS. Apparently it wasn't actually OBS, but for some reason assumed that didn't include audio. Why would Dulu ask you if it was okay to record in a call if they weren't recording audio? If they were just recording the screen, then it wouldn't matter. The assumption that the recording wasn't recording audio, that's on Pentagon and no one else. When people ask you if they can record, the implication is usually that the recording is going to showcase audio because the default for a recording is either audio and visual, or just audio, i.e. stuff like tape recordings and whatnot. If Dulu was only recording their screen, then why would they ask you if it was okay to record? And you can't even say, oh well they could have recorded the Discord chat. You were in a fucking voice call! Of course it would pertain to audio recordings. Your complaint makes even less sense if we believe that you thought that Dulu was on their phone and was there and recording their computer screen because that type of recording wouldn't affect you at all and Dulu wouldn't need permission for that! That doesn't make any sense! I didn't even know that Dulu had recorded anything with you in it. Dulu came to me while I was talking about working on the script and just went, Hey, Ponder, girl, you said it would have been way worse if they were trying to call him a pedophile, right? Well, you want to know a secret? I think I have evidence that Atari did want to call him a pedophile. Um, voice note, hey, all you stupid fuckers who want to take this as an initiative to attack Atari, keep in mind Pentagon was guilty of this exact same thing and Atari actually apologized and did fix where she went wrong. She's a good person. Chill. 
Let's not forget that a week after it happened, you can apparently remember the call enough to be able to say confidently that should the call be played out in full, at no point with the fact that the call is being recorded be mentioned, when earlier in the chat you couldn't even remember that you'd said the things in the call, going so far as to say that you had actually never said that. Pentagrin, that's the opposite of how the human brain works. Your memory gets worse as you get farther from the event in question, not better. Also, let's just ignore the fact that even if it was illegal to record Pentagrin, which apparently because she's in a different country, it's not. Thank you, PK Russell, for pointing that out. Uh, I would not actually be legally responsible because I didn't record the call. Dulu gave it to me and I used it. So, oops. It's at this point the story goes back on what she was claiming earlier, whilst before she touted how their exposed videos would ruin him, that he couldn't ignore being called a pedophile, that it would ruin his job, that his friends in real life watch his videos and are perfectly aware of who he is online, now that my video is out, she tries to backpedal. Now she claims that it's only a persona. He could up and leave and nobody would know. You know, except for his real life friends who knew about his persona. I would also like to... <sighs> oh God, okay, look. I don't want to paint myself as a victim here. I'm not one. That would be stupid. But after my video came out, Stories and Pentagrin started scheming against me. First, they got themselves riled up with their theories that I had been planning against them, which, <laughs> you know, irony. Pentagrin even gets it in her head that I had some sort of gripe against her beforehand, which, no, Pentagrin, I didn't. I thought your videos had been kind of hit or miss. I guess they never miss, huh? No, Pentagrin, I didn't. I thought your videos had been kind of hit or miss in the past, but your recent uploads, I happen to think, were getting much better, and I was very close to subscribing when the whole drama went down. Also, I never said I hate how when I make a video on a person, people more popular than me start making the same video. Now, I can't access the comment because Pentagrin's videos are gone, but if I'm remembering the specific comment that Pentagrin is referring to, I was actually talking about how I thought it was funny that at the time I voiced my dislike of a certain creator, soon after that, a bunch of other people make videos on them. I was reminiscing about that notion because it means I get to watch videos talking shit about people whose content I don't like, which is neat background noise. I was praising your takedown of Deviant Cringe because that was the video that this comment was on. I was trying to get across to you that I liked it, you stupid fuck. Oh yeah, and stories down there? There's gotta be some motive to be honest. Well, you would certainly know about that, wouldn't you? Pentagram wants to take me down for legal stuff. They start off small, trying to vilify me for making the video, which makes even less sense for stories because even according to her own fucking doctrine, by questioning the evidence she provided, I should have been in the clear and therein not doing anything wrong. And heck, according to her, I know that I did exactly what she wanted me to because she told me as much. Yeah, we'll get to that. She effectively showcases the same mentality Fran did in my last video. Stories talks about how horrible it is for people to just blindly believe and how bad it is for them to be sheep, but she was playing into and utilizing that when she tried to expose Spockter. She was perfectly satisfied that people were believing her because it played into her narrative. But when someone doesn't believe her and the sheep suddenly don't fall in line because of that, now it's suddenly a bad thing that they're acting the way she wanted them to act in the first place. They get onto my tweets explaining that I didn't like how the videos were worded, reasoning that people coming to them after the fact was my fault, yet they relied on that habit from others to crucify Spockter. Pentagrin goes off in the tweets more, and then Story starts talking about legal stuff. By this point, Atari has actually left the chat for a while, and she's not a part of any of this. It's all Stories and Pentagrin. This eventually descends into Pentagrin inferring that she wants to get the law on my arse. They start trying to get me for hypocritical stuff, saying I was victim blaming and then saying I was wrong to, in their words, defend Spockter because he said he was guilty. Oh, wait a tick, I didn't catch this one. Story says here that there are seven victims, except she was only able to list three people and one of them didn't consider themselves to be a victim. And the two other victims were her and Ghosty. Pretty sure that's not how that works. Stories even start saying that they're going to make a video on my video. Pentagrin brings up the tweets again as Stories starts archiving stuff to make me look bad. Pentagrin goes on to say, check through her Twitter. You'll probably find some gold if you can spin it in a way that shows that she's done exactly what she blasted us for doing. Then it'll make people a lot more aware of this hypocrisy that's been getting masked. Which on Twitter, I was making note of how Pentagrin didn't do anything to stop people sending porn to someone she knew was a minor. Is, is that the hypocrisy? Also, she says, if you can spin it in a way, not find the evidence and show, 
spin. Then they start listing the things I'm guilty of. Pentagrin cites a sex joke I made in a video and tries to use that to say that I'm a child abuser because I didn't try to prevent kids from hearing it, except knowingly not warning artists that they are sending what you believe to be porn directly to a minor is not the same as putting a visually censored sex joke in a public internet video. They bring up that non-contact sexual abuse list and try to cite what Spockter and I are individually guilty of. They bring up where I live while they're at it so they can start checking my own country laws, and then start trying to get me on defamation under the grounds that Spockter had already confessed, therein the accusations were true, and therein from me claiming that stories in Pentagon were wrong, I was committing defamation against them. Like I said, I do not want to paint myself as the victim, and I don't really want to focus on the fact that it was me that they were trying to do this to. Moreover, I want to accent how three days after my video went up, they started planning this. It didn't matter if it was me or somebody else. The two of them, Pentagon and Stories, had this mindset to them. They were mad that they had been knocked from their pedestals, and it wouldn't have mattered who did it. That's what I want to make note of. How quick to go on the offensive they were. How quick to attack. I feel like it's very telling. Stories even went along with this despite her knowing that everything in the video on her end was a lie. Soon after this, Atari came back, PK Russell messaged her, and in May, she booted Stories and Pentagon from the group. Also, can I just say, judging by what Stories typed here, I want to assume that she thought PK Russell was on their side, and that's just... Knowing what happened, that's really funny to me. I was added soon after this point, so that's the end of the chat. But that's not the end of the screenshots. Stories had been going on Twitter to claim that those who didn't agree with what was being presented in the exposed videos were Spockter apologists. Mind you, this was after she'd been told by Atari that I had taken issue with the videos. And then after my video came out, she took to Discord and started saying that my video was victim shaming. But we know that Stories wasn't a victim. She had been lying from the start. She knows this. We know this now too. So why the flying feck is she still going around pretending like she's the wronged party here? Ponder, what if she actually did want to be seen as the victim, and that's why she stood so firmly by it? People lie about horrible things that happen to them all the time. It might just be her grabbing for attention. Oh, it's certainly her grabbing for attention, but there's a bit of an issue with your assumption that she wanted to be seen as the victim because now we're gonna talk about the Honey Bear account and what she tried to pull on there. To start off, Kyra confirmed to me that, yes, Honey Bear was indeed one of Stories' alt accounts. He sent me a screenshot of the server where the conversation we're going to talk about took place. One of the people in that chat even confirmed to Atari that, yeah, it's Stories. And I got further confirmation on this when Kyra added me to Stories' private Discord server, and the Honey Bear account was in there before he kicked it. Now let's look at the messages from that account. The ranting community was fun for like a month, and I didn't realize something needed to change. The sheep in it were annoying and bothersome. Long story short, I shoved a crap ton of calculated chaos down the drama line and forced everyone to rethink situations and who they follow and look up to. And to answer your question, yes, I have feelings. Ugh. Sacrifices must be made for people to realize what's wrong with following without question. You did a bad thing for the better. I could have gone further. Shrugging girl emoji. I don't know what that means. I decided they got the message. And honestly, I don't really see you doing anything wrong. The ranting community itself, it people attacking others on their opinions. Also, side note, they weren't opinions she was crucifying someone for, Cap. I'm gonna give you the benefit of the doubt and assume that you were in the dark, so don't you start with me. Maybe not, obviously, but people aren't gonna just start believing crap on the spot now. Stop it. People are gonna question everything now. That's what I wanted. Mm. In a way, it was like a pool with people in it. You make one wave, and everyone feels it. I was just ready to pick up and go. That's kind of how I planned this out. Then you adopted eight mods that low-key clung to you! Staying in the community wouldn't have been experimenting and making a message anymore. It would have been becoming stuck in the experiment. Man, I had like five known accounts for a reason. Make skirting around faster, but... It it doesn't look suspicious. I kind of feel bad because I did use people. Okay, but yeah, that's kind of a crappy thing to do by your head was in the right place. It's not like Spockter's amount of fucked up shit. Oh good, you are in the dark. Kinda? No. General morality says absolutely wrong. I can't brain right now. It happened to be him, and I ran with it and made him an example. 
How the hell are you guys' morals not working right now? Probably because they're, in your words, mindless sheep who believed your shit on the spot when you presented it. Seagoose gets it. How the hell are you guys' morals not working right now? She was luring Spockner out to expose him, but needed people to be Foundation. She used Pentagrin and Atari. So you framed Spockner? Wait. Or... Well... Jetta, why?! <laughs> Other than you're a piece of shit, okay, who doesn't do that? A lot of people? I use Pentagrin and Atari, dude. Why? They don't even know what I've done. Think about it. Uh... I pushed Atari and Pentagrin forward as pawns, and society doesn't like it when people do that in general. In hindsight, it was a winged idea that would have kept you-know-who shut, but oh well. I do feel bad for Jada and Atari. Do they know? I feel more connected with Jada than Atari, though. Do they know where or who I am? Atari's only had the slightest clue. Jada just thinks I picked up and disappeared. I had someone alerted me as soon as everything was starting, and before the dust blew in, I was gone. <laughs> okay, so there are only a select few who even know where you are as of right now? More like I did some CIA crap, like how my commie friend would call it. Long story short, I twisted the community into knots for my own motives to make everyone question what they're told and who says what. Right. Apparently, the CIA baits people out and exposes them, so that's what I did. In the long run, I didn't even like Spockter. It wasn't exactly targeted, either. It's like when Thanos says he wants to kill half the population so it can thrive. He's right, but it ain't right to the heart. By the crawling chaos, let's break down Stories' mentality here. Firstly, she's admitting to baiting Spockter and manipulating Atari and Pentagrin into being the scapegoats for the reveal of this information. Stories claims that the original motive here was to get people to stop believing things on the spot and start questioning things that they had heard. But that doesn't at all fly with Stories' actions after the information was released. Stories implicitly went to Twitter and started berating those who didn't immediately believe the claims, calling them Spockter apologists, and claiming that in not immediately believing Believing the claims of the victims, they were victim shaming. When my video came out, a video that questioned what had been presented as evidence, a video that did exactly what Stories is claiming here she wanted people to do, all I heard from people was how Stories was bitching about me victim shaming. There's a whole chat section where she and Pentagon are flailing about and getting angry because of that video. What's the matter, Stories? I thought you wanted people to question things. Even saying that, however, it doesn't look as though Stories had any intention of actually clearing up the mess caused by people blindly believing her and her flawed evidence. She was just gonna throw out a bunch of calculated chaos, in her words, and then dip. Stories, if you're trying to teach people a lesson, you have to end off by giving them the lesson. In simply providing the fuel for the fire and then running away, you've explicitly hid the truth of the situation, which upon its reveal, only then would show people that they had been blindly following a lie. How are you expecting people to come to this conclusion when you're hiding the facts? That's like teaching someone creationism, telling them that evolution is abhorrent in the eyes of God, and then expecting them to come around to the theory of evolution all on their own. Are you brain dead? You can't punish people for doing what you wanted them to do. Some people who have seen these screens Screenshots have looked at what Story says and come to the conclusion that she's just bullshitting to make herself look as though she'd planned this from the start. That everything went just according to plan, and she's satisfied with the results and overall unaffected by it. They call bullshit. But now we know that she did plan this from the start. She'd been doing so since December of last year. Stories did plan this. We've already seen through her claims to having been eight years old that Stories is willing to lie to the community to see how many people will believe her bullshit. The case then means that the entire time she was was talking to Atari and Pentagrin, all of her tweets and pretty much everything she had said to people leading up to that point was pretty much fake. That, however, leads on to a much, much larger problem for stories because she had been planning and calculating the downfall of Spockter for a while. Remember when I said that in some instances the claims made against him would be considered libel? The situation is made much worse when it's revealed that this was all premeditated. There's a difference between mistakenly ruining someone's reputation and plotting to do it from the start. Who remembers that little section of non-contact sexual abuse? This is stories coercing sexually explicit material out of Spockter with the intent of using it against him for her own gain. Exploitation is defined as using or treating someone unfairly to benefit from them. Both as Honey Bear and in her personal journals about Spockter, stories made note that she planned to make an example of him. 
According to her, she wanted to use him to make her stomp on the little section of the internet history books. Stories was exploiting Spockter. A minor. This is child exploitation. What makes things even worse for Stories is claim that she was trying to teach the community a lesson. She directly accused and punished someone in the community who was already questioning her claims. Spockter was doing the very thing Stories was criticizing the community for not doing, and she in turn set him up as a martyr. Even after all of this, however, Stories wasn't done. And I say that because on August 5th, Stories reached out to me. This doesn't have anything to do with Stories apologizing to me, so if you were thinking that, then wipe it from your minds. Stories contacted me saying that she wanted to help with the creation of the video she knew I was working on at the time. This would have been the second video. I was apparently very sassy in the conversation. Stories said that she wanted to help in rectifying the situation and by answering my questions. Considering I didn't have questions for her at the time, I thought, why not? I can test something out. So I pulled a bunch of questions off the top of my head. One. Why choose to accuse someone of child grooming slash predatory behavior? 2. How many people were involved in the planning and or were aware of the situation beforehand? 3. In having the evidence proven inaccurate or elicited under false pretenses, why claim the video debunking said evidence was victim shaming? Stories replied. 1. Like the motive? 2. Just Atari and Penegrin. 3. Other people around me and in my circles had told me even before I had made my statements about it being victim shaming that it was, so I just parroted what they said. What you need to know about this is that my questions for stories were filler. I wasn't concerned with anything here except the answer to the second question. What stories didn't know at the time was that I had already acquired testimony from someone else saying that they knew what she was doing. Kyra. He admitted that he knew what stories had been doing, and he encouraged it. Since I already knew the answer to this question, I didn't need stories to answer it for me. I needed to see whether she would be truthful, and she wasn't. Right then, I was able to figure out that she, again, wasn't being truthful. I called her out on this. Stories went on to claim that she has a bad history of paranoia and that she decided to make people hate her so that she could leave. I pointed out, however, that her plan was predicated on the notion that people would recognize her claims being false and therein vilify her for it. She claimed at that point that she was depending on either myself or just a robot in that situation to call out her claims. See, I told you! Right here, she tells me herself that she was depending on me to make my video and call out the claims. Yet despite that, she called me a victim shamer, schemed against me, and berated anyone whose mind I had changed. Of course, not making a lick of sense. But she wanted to apologize. Stories told me that she had made an apology, that she was going to put it in a video, but that she didn't have a platform anymore. So I offered to put her apology here. There were a few hiccups down the line. I didn't really like her first apology, so she decided to make a new one. After my last video went up in October, she asked if she could still put her apology in this video, and I said yes. So Stories gave me her apology so I could show it to all of you here. Hi, I'm Stories. Let me start off by saying, But am I gonna? The answer is no. No, I'm not. And I'm not going to do it for a few different reasons. Firstly, she had been planning this since December. She's lied at every turn, and when I discovered exactly how far back she'd been planning this, she freaked out. I don't think her apology is sincere. Secondly, my offering to put her apology in my video was because she didn't have a platform at the time. Not only does she have a platform again, I also found out, again, through her boyfriend, that in a voice call she claimed that she, quote unquote, didn't need my fucking platform, and has been referring to me as the enemy behind closed doors. So, if you don't need my platform, then I guess you don't get it. Thirdly, Tech, Spockter, asked me not to. I view him as the victim in this situation, and so I'm going to respect his wishes on the matter. Not hers. The final reason is this. How many chances are you going to give this guy? He's a sexual offender. He's not just called someone a bitch over the internet. It's more serious than that. He said everything he's done, but he didn't change. So why would he now? You can't just give someone who's done this shit more chances. He's just gonna keep repeating himself like he's done. I... I don't understand. He said everything in that video to me before. Word for word. But he didn't fucking change. So why would he now? Wow, the apology segment of this script was less than two pages.
Guess it really shows how empty her apology was. Well, would you look at the time? It's February 28th and the video is supposed to be rendering, but also Pentagram made a video and I should talk about it? Yeah, guys. Don't worry, I've seen the video. Saw it back when it only had two comments, back before it was removed and Pentagon vanished again, much like Stories has been doing on her new channel for a couple of months now. Ding, I'm here, dong, now I'm gone. Ding, here I am, dong, gone again. It should come as a surprise to no one that the video was not particularly great and not received well. There are mirrors online and I'm sure provided one still exists, I will be able to link to it in the description. Most people assume the video was an apology, but it was pretty apparent that this wasn't the case, especially because, as far as I know, Pentagrin still hasn't apologized to Spockter. Someone spoke to her a few months ago, and at the time, at least, she had no plans to apologize because of other things she perceived Spockter to be. Specifically, I think she said he was racist, therefore she wasn't going to apologize. Which, goddammit, nobody ever learns. By that logic, Pentagrin, I don't have to apologize to or feel bad for you because you tried to ruin a teenage boy's life for petty reasons. I actually also spoke with Pentagrin on Twitter and admittedly am a tad disappointed. We had an overall cordial discussion, but I gave her warnings about what would happen if she was trying to come back. People were mad at and were clearly still mad at her for vanishing like she did and refusing to say anything about the matter until now. Considering Stories is the biggest culprit here and she's still hiding in the shadows like a cowardly little monster, Pentagrin would then become the new focus for everyone's anger because they can't focus it on Stories herself. The same thing happened to Atari when when Pentagon and Stories first ditched. I warned her that this would happen, and also that my video was coming out soon so that she didn't get blindsided by it, and yet she still left. God, you tell a person the best way to get people to not be mad is to take the distrust in stride, apologize, and show progression with your actions. And she immediately sinks back into the same thing she did before. Don't even know anymore. People have a right to be mad. Spockter certainly has a right to still be mad about this, considering he hasn't even gotten closure on Pentagon's side, and this situation could have ruined him. He's spoken with stories and obviously doesn't forgive her, but at least on that front he got the closure he needed. I hate how stupid and serious this whole situation was, especially because one of the people purportedly thinking it was serious this whole time refuses to acknowledge the similarly serious matter of her being wrong. I don't even care about Pentagon trying to rewrite history at this point like some of her explanations in that video seem to be doing. In going over the screenshots, it became apparent that she doesn't remember stuff she said a week after it happens, so why would I expect her to remember something she typed close to a year ago? I'm sure other people will have a plethora of things to say regarding that video, so I'll just let them do their thing. I spent money on this video. Isn't that usually the opposite of how internet revenue is supposed to work? Guess who actually spent money so that they could talk to a lawyer and ask them about the situation? It was a very sad before Christmas me. I went to a legal site, just answer if you're curious, and talked to a criminal lawyer about the drama. I explained the situation and was able to get a pretty quick answer after she did some preliminary research, I'm guessing regarding the specific state laws. I was told that because both parties exchanged in the exchange of illicit material to each other, both parties were equally responsible on that front. One thing I didn't know is that apparently while many states have statutes protecting minors in cases like this, reducing it from a federal charge to a misdemeanor, a few states don't do that and Stories happens to live in one of those states. By the way, the blocked out words are, uh, the state that Stories lives in. Don't ask me how I got that, I'm not even entirely sure myself. Incidentally, it was very useful in asking about specific state laws, so, uh, yay me! Even if Stories wants to continue claiming that she didn't actually send nudes of herself and they were just random porn images that she found online, which Spockter has said is not the case, she's still legally responsible because she still sent porn images to a minor. So there you have it. An actual lawyer's view on the case. That was fun. It's been almost a year with this garbage, and things just seem to get worse and worse with every breath. Yeah, Pentagram might scoff at the notion of me taking months to release a video, but if this experience has taught me anything, it's that if you wait a little bit, then you might stumble across something you wouldn't have otherwise. I've said it before, and I'll say it again. This whole mess was disgusting. In this case in particular, I think it's pretty obvious that Stories has certainly been the most disgusting cog in the machine by far. She's made it so that I can't believe a single word that she said, and I would be honestly surprised if other people still 
did after this. Her behavior has flip-flopped so many times since she's apparently started scheming months ago that I can't even be sure right now if me making a video like this is playing into her narrative or not. One week she wants to be the villain and the next she wants to be the victim. Who can keep track with this girl? Even if that were the case, however, I think it's important to point out exactly what this girl's been doing. For anyone who still thinks that Stories was telling the truth, guys, this video is for you. She'd been planning this for months. She baited Spockter and lied about her feelings in chats with him. She committed the same crimes and then ignored and hid the fact that she did so just so that she could vilify someone she didn't like. She has very clearly expressed how she effectively wants to have power over people and wants them to believe her at her word and respect her privacy when she refuses to do as much for anyone else. I mean, admittedly, taking people at their word ain't the best choice, but the fact is that she wanted people to do it for her and then got mad if they did it for other people. Because stories is the center of the world or some shit like that. This shouldn't be allowed to fly. And since I'm done, and I think we have put out all of the evidence we need to showcasing that stories and Pendergrin were guilty in this, I think it's time for a punishment. <laughs> Wasn't that fun? It's not like it took my artist a month to make all of those assets, so fucking no. With that, honestly, I hope I'm done with this. As amusing as it can be to hear about how stories is flailing in the background, I really do want to move on to other things. So can y'all just chill for a bit and give me my holiday? I'll see you in the new year, my cuties. And if you thought I was done, no, because now it's time for a fan art feature because I have gotten a lot of fan art regarding this and since this and I just haven't had the time to showcase it all and I really want to give everybody some love. First up, we have All Sprocket by the Hot to the Touch DC Fire Hyena. A lot of Ponder Sprocket as All Might fan art came about because of these videos. Y'all be drawing me as my husband though. Next, we have Judge Ponder by the Sweet and Spicy Kyrie Curry. Justice is not a blind woman, it's a cute octopus. Apparently. Zooming in to the end of everyone is The Ranting Community Isn't Feeling So Good by at Sarah of Dust, which is just such an unfortunate name given the context. This actually comes with a twin image. Yeah, another thing that started from these videos was Thanos Ponder Sprocket. I guess that's kind of funny considering what Story said. Pretending to end on a cliffhanger, we have Next Time on Dragon Ball Z by the sweet evidence gathering bean Mimi Diggs. Seeing this kind of fun had, even if you're being told that you're wrong, on something is nice. I like seeing stuff like this. And next, we have Hecking Cute Lecture by the Hecking Adorable Digital Leo. Apparently to further quench my thirst on cuties poking fun at the whole thing. Good stuff. Swooping in to yell, I am here is our savior, the almighty Ponder Sprocket by the teasing me with that name, O.C. Tentaya. Fiend looks very comfortable all squished in there. To bring us infinitely more fun is Infinity Ponder by the Foxy Fun at WillowFox22. What am I supposed to say when someone sends me an animation of my character? I can't make words happen through the tears. Moving on, we have Protecting by That Could Be A Dirty Name at Fuku Demon. Digby clinging to Spockter, I guess, was appropriate given the Digby Exposed videos originally planned, but overall, I just think the image is very funny. We've got We're Sorry, Spockter by Zunzu the Cthulian, and that's a hefty name, which is a neat compilation piece with a bunch of the events that actually went down in the drama. Thank you, Kanye. Very cool. Finally, we'll end off with Shh, we're un 
undercover by this sweetly beautiful money Pue. I hope I said that right. There you go, Pentagrin. I guess I really was scheming behind the scenes. Here's the art to prove it. If you like any of these pieces, then please give some love to the original artist in the description. You can also check out my own stuff, blah, blah, blah. Links. Links. Also, I'm sure it's apparent that it may or may not be a week later and I may or may not be extremely sick and tired, but uh, I actually just want to take this opportunity to thank everyone who's been helping me with this video. Not just like my general friends, but also Dulu Vabzakin in particular, who has been helping me gather stuff and put the video together. See, some people may not be aware of this, but a couple weeks ago my network adapter driver crashed and it is now kaput and my computer can't access the internet anymore, so I've been having a lot of trouble putting this video together. Together, which is very reminiscent of all the trouble that I went through putting the first video together, which I'm not gonna get into. But that being the case, I did want to thank everybody who helped me out. You guys are freaking amazing. Everybody who got their lines in, in a ridiculously short amount of time, and Dulu in particular for helping me to edit this while Doodle Tones edited another video in the background. Thank you to both of you. I also want to take an additional opportunity to thank my patrons on Patreon because they have been supporting me through all of this and they are amazing. So to my top patrons in particular, K Katie Tidwell, Adam Villarreal, Duck Detective, Amanda Casillas, and Mr. Radiance. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. I'll be releasing some merch designs and some comic books in the new year. We're gonna have much more varied video content, so hopefully that'll be a lot of fun for you guys. With that said, that's about all I got. Happy New Year, y'all. Octomama, out. Who was younger than him when he turned 18. She cites it be- <coughs> Oops. <coughs> I'm losing my voice. <clears throat> Pentagram also had the gall to claim that she didn't endorse the pedophilia label. Oh my god. My heart is pounding so much. Uh, uh, uh. I don't know why pushing on my tits makes that happen easier, but it does. Uh. <clears throat> Pentagrin also had the gall to claim that she didn't endorse the pedophilia label within her video despite this garbage having gone on behind closed doors. Oh, whoops. Whoops. Gall claimed to me. She did it to me!